That's baseball. This is Roger's box. Of all the dramatic <laughs> things. The George's box. Roger Clemens is she's, in George's box. Have you ever seen anything in all my years? All my years. Oh my God. Jake, what? On today's part of my take, we have our good, good friend, Blake Griffin. He announced his retirement on Tuesday. We get the first interview with him, and it was beautiful. It was perfect, Blake Griffin. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 he's been part of our show for a very long time. Uh, stay till the end when we uh, kidnap him and ask him the dumbest questions possible. Uh, but really great to catch up with him, talk about his career. We're going to talk about the NBA play-in games. We're going to talk about PFT's Capitals getting into the playoffs and the uh, NHL playoffs coming up. We've got Hot Seat Cool Throne, and we also have the debut of our turtle, Mr. Pear. Mr. Pear makes his first pick for Wednesday night's play-in game. We have him pick the Sixers Heat game. So uh, make sure you're watching for that. Great, great show. Great part of my take show. It's all brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. The 82-game preseason is in the books, and it's finally time for the real season. Don't miss out on any of the NBA playoff action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA from the play-in tournament through the finals. From every opening tip to every buzzer beater, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered with same-game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. And if you're new to this whole sports betting thing, it's super easy to get started. Try betting on something simple like a team to win. Go to the app, select your team, and place your first bet. It's that simple. We've got uh, the Bulls and Hawks. We've got the Sixers and the Heat. I believe the Sixers are five-point favorites as of the taping of this show. So go check it out, the DraftKings Sportsbook, and here's something else to sweeten the deal for all new customers. Bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. New customers, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use code TAKE. That's code TAKE to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just $5 only on DraftKings. The crown is yours with DraftKings. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by DraftKings. New customers, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code TAKE. That's code TAKE to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just $5 only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Today is Wednesday, April 17th, and PFT, I got a question for you. Pop quiz, hot shot. I got an answer for you. Okay. Is it better to be up three at the end of a game with three seconds left or be up four? This is a tough analytics question that is hotly debated in the math community. Reggie Miller asked this question tonight, and I said to myself, thank God, because I've been saying this for years. I'd almost rather be up three points than four points, Big Cat. The, the best part about Reggie Miller asking this Do you, do you this, want to know why? Why? Tell me. Yeah, I, I don't know, because I've got a brain injury. Well, so he, the best part about Reggie Miller asking this question, it was the, it was the Lakers-Pelicans uh, game, which we'll get to both games, playing games. But the best part about him asking this question, the situation was the Lakers were up two with 2.7 seconds left. They get fouled, and he says out loud, and you could hear his brain, like, turning on out loud. He was like, if you make the first one, you're up three. Do you try to purposefully – Miss the second one because they don't have any timeouts, so they have to go coast to coast. And then he finished it with saying, or do you just make them both go up four and game over? Like at the end, yeah, he, he was like, wait, shit, four points. Yeah, that would be game over. He tied it together nicely at the end, which was good. But for a second, I was with you. I was like, what? And I'm a, don't get me wrong. I'm a big, you don't need a three here guy. <laughs> like that's, that's my favorite thing to say at the end of a game. If there's one second left, if there's half a second left, if you're down four points, I will be the guy that says, don't need a three here. Just to remind people that I know ball. Um, but yeah, in that instance, I was just like, what, is, what, is, what could Reggie even be talking about? But I think he just mixed up having a two versus three point lead and having a three versus four point lead. Yeah, I don't know what he mixed up, but it was uh, the Lakers survive. They win another play in. They've won three play ins. They've gotten into the playoffs 
three uh, times th- via the play-in. Uh, we had an all-time, all-time Zion Williamson uh, performance, 40 points. He was so, so good. It was like everything that you wanted Zion to be, he was it tonight. And then he got hurt where we don't really know what he got hurt with. He threw his, uh, you know, uh, towel down, went to the locker room. We even had the weird moment where Kevin Harlan and Reggie Miller were like, we're going to go to Ali LaForce. She has an update on Zion. And she's like, guys, I don't know shit. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. No one knows. And then afterwards, he left uh, without a limp and didn't talk to reporters. So we're left just wondering what the hell happened because I think the Pelicans win that game if Zion stays in the game. They had Brandon Ingram wasn't good. He was he he's been coming back from injury. He just looked bad. And Zion was like, I'm putting the whole team on my back. And he almost beat the Lakers by himself. Yeah, the entire game was just a, a microcosm of his entire career, really. He's like, yeah. oh, he's awesome, he's awesome, he's awesome. Fuck, he's hurt. That's right. kind of how it goes. And after the play was over, I was trying to figure out what was wrong. Like I was trying to diagnose it via the video. And it was really strange because he he does that little drive through the hole, makes the shot. And then he like pumps his fist and turns around. And then he, after like two steps, then he realizes, oh, I need to start walking slower. And it may be the only thing I could think of. And they said they're doing like an MRI on his leg is it, he might've felt whatever pain he was in might be familiar to him. Like he knows exactly what it is and he knows exactly what it means because he's had it before and he knows how yeah. long it's going to take to recover from it. Cause it wasn't like, it didn't look to be catastrophic. Like, oh fuck my Achilles is torn or uh ACL or anything like that. It was just like a realization of God damn it. This sucks because I know exactly what it is. That's hurt. And it sucks that it's hurt, but I can't do anything about it. It sucked. It sucked. Cause he was having an incredible, incredible performance and we're stuck just being like, fuck, that was going to be awesome. But the Lakers do advance. Should we start the narrative? Is this Lakers team dangerous PFT? They now play the nuggets. Um, mm-hmm. I like, you know, this is going to be the story that's everyone talking about. Like, look at the Lakers. I think they finished the season like 24 and 10. So they've, they've played well. A lot of guys who won a bubble championship, which we half count except for Caruso. That's a full championship for him. Um, Are we going to, are we going to do the watch out for the Lakers? They could beat the nuggets. Oh, I think we have to, I think we have to say that. Well, Hank, Hank, are you in that they're going to beat the the nuggets? Are you in that? We have to talk them up. Hank's muted, probably for the best. Yeah, Hank is muted. But I think they could beat the Nuggets. I think they could beat the Nuggets. I believe. Do you think they could beat the Nuggets? Now, yeah. Championship experience, you know. Championship (laughs) DNA. One of the greatest players of all time, Anthony Davis, all stars, all NBA players. (laughs) Why not? Yeah. Uh, Well, I don't think they're nearly as good as the Nuggets, is the thing. Anthony Let's, Davis does look healthy. We, I think that's how we started last year's playoffs. Anthony Davis looks really, really healthy right now. And he's an absolute beast when he is healthy. Um, mm-hmm. Let me ask you a question, Hank. Uh, this series, how many games is this series? It's a seven-game series. It's a seven-game series. Okay. So if it were a 15-game series... Mm-hmm. The, I would give you the Lakers, I would say, because the Lakers have beaten the Nuggets four times over the last 15 times they've played. So I would give you that. If they played 15 games and all the Lakers had to do was get to four, if I would said, say, yes, uh, that can happen. Best of 15, but yeah. it's only four when it's the Lakers. 15 times in the last three years they played, and the Lakers have won four times. I just – I think we're going to – everyone's going to talk themselves into it. And I, I mean, the Lakers are not, I don't think the Nuggets wanted to see the Lakers. I, I would, I would guess that because they obviously, I mean, anytime you have to play LeBron in the playoffs, it's scary, but last year they did sweep them. People said it was the the closest sweep that's ever happened in a seven game series. I think the Nuggets are better. Yeah. I mean, we all remember game four, one of the all time best games in the history of the NBA that nobody will remember. Yeah. Hank, what are you doing to yourself right now? Because like PFT and I are putting ourselves in a very uh, open situation where if the Lakers somehow win this series, this will look terrible for us. But it also would mean LeBron beat the champs and they would be like, OK, now who else do they have they, You know, they could get to the finals. So what are you doing? I just want someone to beat the Nuggets. I like take them seven oh, games, okay. drag out battle, really yeah. just really just. But- 
here's what turns into a war. Because, here's, against us. It, it, early. No, but here's, oh, it's not but against here's the you. thing. Here's the thing. I think I think we we might have to just go along with Hank because Hank he knows ball. I think I think Hank's right, and the Lakers can do it, and the Lakers can actually go all the way to the NBA Finals, and I think the the Lakers could beat the Celtics in the oh. NBA Finals, and LeBron could get a title. I would over be Hank, down for that, and that would be that would awesome. Be, that would so be the scenes. The start of the championship <laughs> DVD was Zion throwing the towel and going in and huffing and puffing into the locker room. That was the start of the Lakers, Celtics championship. Yeah, the Lakers DVD? Western Conference Finals DVD champion. DVD. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, the uh, so the Pelicans. I don't know what ha- is going to happen with Zion if he's going to play on Friday. I don't. I mean, without a limp, I I would say no because it looked like he was. Like he looked like he had a non-contact injury, and he knew right away that he was fucked. Yeah, you know that look that he had. It was it was either he knew immediately it was really really bad, or he knew immediately because he's had that same injury before and he reaggravated it. Right. So they're gonna play the Pelicans. Are gonna play the Kings. Light the beam. The Kings take down the Warriors. Um, is this the end? Is this the end for the Warriors? Because they uh, went out pretty sad. It felt like they never – they got, like, what, to four points at halftime. It was like, okay, here come the Warriors. They were never – like, Steph was never able to get open shots. Clay is washed. I I so stupidly was like, what if Clay just has a throwback game? Because I love, I love Clay, but he's he's washed. And uh, now you have, like, a bunch of questions of, are the Warriors – is that it? Is that, like, is this finally it? It was probably it last year, but is this yeah, finally it? I think we said last year that that should have been it. At the end of their run, they needed to do something like drastic to, to retool themselves. But uh, they there's no more frustrating team to watch when they stink than the Warriors. When I they're know. good, it looks like they broke basketball. And when they stink, it looks like basketball broke them. They yeah. were, they're just so frustrated. You just want to, like, yell at the TV, like, quit being pussies. You just yeah. want to scream at them. Make some shots. They just yeah. couldn't make any shots. And they're, you know, they're they're trusting on guys that are not playing in the right positions with Trace Jackson Davis. And, you know, there was a moment where uh Moses Moody hit a couple threes and you're like, oh, here come the Warriors. And it's just no, that's it's it's over. I'm I th- I'm actually disappointed that uh Draymond didn't get ejected. That felt like an ejection game. I was yeah, very upset wanted, about that. I think he wanted to go. Um yeah. Is, what does this mean for Chris Paul's legacy? Oh, another playoff loss. We should yeah. probably get Rosillo on. Yeah, we need to talk about this. Chris Paul blew it. I'm going to text him right now, and we'll just see if he can respond in, in, in quick enough time. Yeah, just, um, just a comment, really, is all, with, all that we need. Actually, Hank, you text him, because he doesn't respond to your text. So just ask, ask is, this another, <laughs> is this another Chris Paul playoff loss? Just ask Just him. that? Yeah, and then mm-hmm. maybe ask if you can get the video for oh, your brother's that, bachelor that. party. I'll get my phone. <laughs> Yeah, actually, you know what, Big Cat? This is the, you should Facetime him because he Facetimed you when the Badgers lost. Yeah. This is his this equivalent is of the worse. Badgers losing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Although I mean, Chris Paul, this doesn't. He he was not. He was a non-factor. Um, I have a question for you, PFT. So mm-hmm. the Kings, uh, they kind of like sputtered down the stretch. This is a big win for them. Obviously, the Warriors like have been there. You know, they've had some great wars with them in the last few years. Uh, Sabonis is so much fun to watch. Sabonis does does he just have uh has he just had a black eye for five years? I feel yeah, like he's had yeah. a black eye constantly. I, I think he he like does the uh, the smoky eye to himself before every game for intimidation reasons. Yeah, but he looks he looks intimidating. You don't want to fuck with a guy like that. It's like no. you see a guy with a black eye, you see a guy with a missing tooth, or you see a guy with cauliflower ear. You steer clear. This, but I just another. I, what, Chris Paul. What? Is this another Chris Chris Paul loss? He's asking us for the playoff play loss. Context. Yeah. What? Asking for comment. Doesn't count as the playoffs, right? Isn't playing separate? Oh, true. Shit. So how Jay, do we, how Jay, should we phrase this? Well, let's let Ryan arrive at that conclusion on his own. I don't want to. I don't want to give him excuses ahead of time. Uh, the fact that Hank's sending this text is great. Uh, and also, shout out Keegan Murray. Iowa basketball is is on fire right now. Um, we talk a little bit about the WNBA draft during Hot Seat Cool Throne. He was awesome. He had everything. So, yeah, maybe let's light the beam. Let's just keep lighting the beam. I do. Look, I, 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 I want I do the have, Kings to be good. Yeah. Yeah, I do, too. I, I don't think that they have a chance against the Thunder, but I want them to be good. Um, I also would like them to maybe lengthen their nets because I just I can't stand watching a game 
this is a very sad old guy take, but whenever the nets are really short, it just bothers me. Yeah, I want to see um, swishes. I want to see cool swishes. I want to see the, my, I want to see the net really swish. I would like them to do the, the uh, in season tournament with chain nets. So you get the swish sound with the chain, like playground sound. That would, I would like that as well. Um, all right. So did you send the text Hank? There's no way he's going to respond no. in time for yeah. I mean, his last response he's probably, was, yeah, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> we should we should have Hank just be the designated Rosillo texter because mm-hmm. you know that he's just not going to respond, and we could be like, well, we'll chalk it up to it being Hank. Uh, PFT, other things we got to talk about. Oh, they're lighting the beam right now. Sabonis with his with his uh, black eyes lighting the beam. They fucking killed the Warriors. They killed the Warriors. There's the beam. It's lit. The, the uh, beam is very cool. PFT, congratulations to your Capitals clinching the A spot in um, the NHL playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs. Mm-hmm. That was a crazy, like, 10 minutes of hockey. I was actually watching the Red Wings game because I was kind of wanting Patrick Kane to get in the playoffs. The Red Wings scored with three seconds left, yeah. and then the, the Flyers, knowing that they needed to win in regulation, pulled their goalie and then lost in regulation. And people yeah. are big mad at you, PFT, in the Capitals. That's fine. That's I understand why they're mad. They they should be mad at Torts. They should be mad at the coach yeah. of the Flyers because what happened was you're right. The Flyers needed to win in regulation to have any shot at it, and nobody told Torts that the Red Wings had scored to tie it up at the end of regulation. So Torts was operating under the assumption that they could still get into the playoffs with a regular uh, regular time win. So they pulled their goalie. And nobody told him that the goal happened until after the Capitals went down and scored, which is about a minute and a half of real time. Uh, like after the, the goal happened in the Detroit game to when the Capitals scored, it was about one minute, 20 seconds. And yep. in that time, nobody let Torts know, OK, you can put the goalie back out there. Um, but I don't know, like if, if that was the plan all along to have some guy on the bench with like an iPad checking the scores every 30 seconds and and keeping him informed. But for whatever reason, he didn't do it. It ended up working out pretty good for me, so I'm not going to complain. Uh, but this is th- this Caps team is the weirdest fucking team ever. Nobody thought they were going to make the playoffs. Their goal differential is uh, unbelievably bad. Last time I checked, I don't know what it is now. I think it was like 36. They ended up minus 36 on the season, I think, in goal differential. The last team to make the playoffs with a goal differential of minus 30 or worse was the 1994 1995 San Jose Sharks. Whoa. So, uh, yeah. We've I'm had- rooting for you guys because there's nothing better than when a team makes the playoffs and everyone's like, no one wanted to see this. Fuck this. This is bullshit. That's the team yeah. you got to worry about because everyone yeah. was so mad and was like, fuck this. The Capitals are boring. They're going to get killed by the Rangers. I might have to bet them against the Rangers. Fuck it. Well, here's the good news is the Caps made the playoffs. Bad news is they have to play the Rangers who won the President's Trophy. Which is, you know, basically impossible to lose in the playoffs if you're that good of a team that you win the President's Trophy. So there's like no chance that we can beat the Rangers. But I'm just glad to be there. Just very happy to be there. We got a hot goalie too. Don't forget about that. Our goalie's Let's standing go. on his head. I think the last two months he might be. I think he's first in goals or goals against average. He's got a bunch of shutouts. He's playing really, really well. Um, the thing about the Caps is they they get the shit kicked out of them. All the time. That's why it's been such a frustrating season. They've lost 13 games by four or more goals this year. 13 games. But they're tied. I think they're top five for most one goal wins this season. So they they can win the close ones. So, I mean, really all I wanted, I said this to you guys before we left for the day, is all my teams stink right now. I just I want to have one team that I can root for in a playoff situation. And the Capitals are that team. And Actually, tip of the cap to the Capitals because every everything else in D.C. by and large has sucked for the last like 20, 25 years. The the Nats had that one World Series run, which was incredible. But the Capitals are just they they're always there for me. They're yeah. my main bitch. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. Um, got a oh, hey. Oh, you got a response? Said so that's mean. Oh no, oh. he can't it's actually crazy. care about the, the Chris Paul at this point. Like it's he's not even he's playing off the bench. That wasn't a Chris Paul loss. I'm going to say right now, Rasilla, that wasn't a Chris Paul loss. That was a Clay Thompson loss. I'm excited for you, I think, PFT. I, I think it's partially Chris Paul, too. Yeah, par- partially. I'm excited for you, PFT, you. about the Capitals. I, I, I really do. I, I do love whenever a team makes the playoffs and it's like, 
you you like everyone it, that was all i saw everyone was like fuck this we'd rather yeah. see this team or that team nah capitals got in and they did it in the last like three seconds or, or two minutes of the season yeah i asked um i asked vikings fans how i can prepare to respond to all the haters out there that'll be like but the goal differential is so bad you know they had their team that made the playoffs not this past season but but two seasons ago and uh the majority of responses were just like It'll be fine. Just try not to lose to a team from New York in humiliating fashion in the first round. Mm. So okay. um, I'm going to try to take that to heart. And then uh, they also told me just like any anytime somebody says the Capitals shouldn't be in the playoffs, just so, tell them to suck my dick. So that's what yeah. I'm going to do. Um, I have also one last advanced analytics I'd like to share with you guys. Um, so I'm going to read. I'm going to read something, and then I'm going to tell you the advanced analytics behind it. So this is from March 26th. Um, about to tune into my first Flyers game of the year. Apologies in advance to all the diehards out there. At this point, the, the uh, Philadelphia Flyers had 36 wins on the season. This is March 26th. Mm-hmm. They finished with 38 wins. They went 2-8 and eight mm-hmm. after that tweet, and they missed mm-hmm. the playoffs by a point. They went 2-8, and eight, and that was from our very own Max Lente. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't believe that. I, I remember when you said you were going to watch your first Flyers game. And then I just went and looked at the schedule, and it's just L's just everywhere. How did you do he was, that? He was flyered up, big cat. I don't know. I don't know if you heard the news. L's everywhere. Two and eight to finish the season after Max decided to tune in. They only lost by one That's point. That's actually what one single point. I think they lost. I think they ended up losing by. It, there was a bunch of tiebreakers uh, for the last spot. But, yeah, the Flyers ended up with uh, 87 points. Capitals ended up with 91. But uh, that was also including tonight's game where they lost in regulation. Uh, that's – even for you, Max, that's impressive. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sixers. It's all about the yeah, Sixers. But- but there's there's definitely a bunch of people from Philly that are listening to this and they're pissed off yeah. at you. What do you say to them? I'm, I'm so I am I do apologize to them, but I, I, I that was also that was the only game I watched, and that was oh, so, it's just so you one. just you All just it takes drive, is one. you drive by stunk them. I, like I literally You're just like hey here's my stink I'm gonna um I'm out of here guys. I guess I don't know I don't think this counts I don't care like I I I, I know like two players on the Flyers I would have if they made the playoffs though I would have got fired up. You would have been. Yeah. You would have been in the fucking flyer zone. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry to Philly. Yeah, right. I, I was. I was gonna be really mad at you, Max, if, if you had beaten the Capitals tonight, and you would have gone into your like little flyer zone in the playoffs, and then I would just be sitting here sad about everything. No, I'm happy. To, care about the I'm very happy that you made it over over me. Thanks, yeah. Max. It means a lot. We got. I just yeah. need one. I don't. Have, I don't ask for a lot in sports. I just. I want to. I want to have one team that I can put my heart and soul into for at least a week during the playoffs over the course of a calendar year. I don't think that's too much to ask from the sports gods. We're just, we're right in the, I mean, I expect the bulls to maybe win on Wednesday night, but then lose uh, to the heat or the Sixers. And so we're back in the spot where Hank's just sitting with two teams. Everyone else just, you know, you you, you got in at the last game. I'm going to play in Max is in a play in trying, yeah. trying, but Trying but to get cat, in, you've had you've had like a banner year in drafts, though. That's true. That's all true. your draft success. It's true. Your draft success this year has been worth like one playoff it's, series for sure in terms of enjoyment. That's true. Um, we we also I, I completely forgot, and we'll get to it later with Mister Pear, who's owned by our one and only memes. But we get crazy memes coming up soon with the Islanders because they have been on a historic yeah. run to get into the playoffs, and memes is a fucking psycho with the Islanders. And you know what? He's he might hate the Rangers more than I do right he now. He does. So like I, I've got does. I got him on my side. I've got a very powerful force behind me. Yes, he absolutely does. Um, okay, let's kick it to ourselves. We have a uh, hot seat, cool throne. We have a great Blake Griffin interview, and then we have Mister Pear. Awesome show. Awesome, awesome show. Uh, let's kick it back to ourselves in studio. Okay, before we get to hot seat, cool throne, top golf. It's golf. It's not golf. It's top golf. If you've never heard of them. They have all the stuff to make them legit golf, like balls, clubs, turf, and even a ball picker upper cart thing. 
but they're very much not golf too. We're talking loud music, giant targets, climate controlled bays, and unbeatable food and drinks. Day or night, we went in Arizona. We had a great time. Great food, by the way. Uh, the wings were f- were phenomenal. The flatbread pepperoni mm. honey pizza. So good. Incredible. And the golf was also incredible from PFT and myself. Yeah, I think I got a win. Big Cat, you got a win? I got a couple wins. It was great. Yeah, it was a fun time for, yeah. for the whole squad. Yeah. We had to order a second round of appetizers. Yeah. Because Max ate everything. Yeah. Oh, that's so. mean. Oh, that's mean. That's mean. But uh, yeah, go Detroit. watch the PMTV. We had a great time at Top Golf. Hank lost everything. So, with spring and summer on the horizon, if you're looking to add some more play to your life, Top Golf is the place to be since they want everyone to play. They just launched half off golf Monday through Wednesday when you book in the app. All you have to do is book a Monday through Wednesday in their app, and you'll get half off the golf. Of course, even they have some rules, half off golf Monday through Wednesday applies to gameplay only, isn't offered at the Vegas venue, and is only available when you book in their app. For a limited time, get half off golf every Monday through Wednesday when you download and book in the app. For full details, visit topgolf.com forward slash PMT. That's topgolf.com forward slash PMT. Henry, hot seat, cool throne. Did you file your taxes? My hot seat <laughs> is uh, CBS. Oh, okay. Did they not file their taxes? <laughs> I don't know about that, uh, but they did air a live televised concert of Billy Joel at MSG. Uh-huh. Yes. And they cut it off with two minutes to go in the middle of Piano Man, but basically man before it started. The Masters ran too long. Also not great. Not great ratings for the Masters. Oh, really? Yeah. So we didn't like it. Didn't like it. Doesn't help that Scotty had won by the by ten or eleven. Is Caitlin Clark bad for men's golf? I would say so. Everyone was gearing up. They're saving their watching for the WNBA I draft. Um, so CBS did pay their taxes. CBS probably did pay their taxes, although you know networks, corporations, it's a little they get a little shady with that stuff. So they cut off after Friday or Saturday. When is when is the uh, the Billy Joel song? When does it take place? Uh, it's Saturday. Saturday. It's, it's Five o'clock on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Nine o'clock on a Saturday. Yeah, people were pissed. They're, also, they're there were re, a lot of commercials. They're re-airing re- the entire thing. Damn, because people are so mad. Billy Joel lives the best life. He just takes a helicopter from his house. Well, I think that's court mandated. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he, he's not he can't fly the helicopter. He can't drive. Yeah. Uh, he takes a helicopter from his house, goes to MSG, sells it out. Mm-hmm. Twenty minutes, he's home. Yeah, Glenny Ball's in the front row every time. Yeah, great life. It's incredible. Yeah, I feel like we should. I should have gone to one of those at one point. Yeah, I feel the same way because you go to I MSG agree. and you see the and big Stu banner. Stu invited me no less than five. I know. Times. And I think he invited me to the one on Sunday. Yeah, the banner. They have a dedicated banner next to him. I think it's bigger than the Ranger Stanley Cup banners, actually. All right. So next time we have to go to New York City, let's just say we can't go unless Billy Joel's playing. Yep. And we'll do that. Is this a he good? Is the be- he just has hits after hits after hits. You forget all of them. Yeah. Top three Billy Joel songs. Uh Vienna. Okay. Um, Italian restaurant. Yep, that's a good one. Bottle of red. Yeah, and I will go. Uh, whew. Down Easter Alexa. Rocket okay. Man. Those are Rock, my three. Rocket Man's yeah, a great Billy close. Joel song. Yep. Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. What, do, what, are, your, what are your Billy what are your Joel top song. three? The one they did for Princess Diana, I thought it was really touching. Yeah, yeah, Candle in the Wind. Yeah, Candle in the Wind <laughs> is number one. Um, number two. I'm going to say uh, The Bitch is Back. Yep. Bitch is Back rocks. And then Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. Yeah. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Saturday. Billy Joel rocks. Dua Lipa song is pretty good, too. Cool. What, okay. Did she do her taxes? What does that have to do with anything? I don't know why you keep bringing up taxes. <laughs> My cool throw. You did your taxes, though. Of course. I'm an American. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes? Uh, My cool throne is the WNBA, because ratings talk. The uh, ratings came in for the WNBA draft. Uh-huh. Stunning. Stunning. Stunning numbers. 2.4 million viewers for the WNBA draft. Last year, it was 572,000. The NBA draft did 3.7 million on ABC. The MLB draft had 744,000. NHL, 681,000. I didn't even know that the MLB draft was televised. Yeah. N- had no, no idea. MLB Network. They do it in Studio Forty Two at the baseball field. Where do you guys took BP? That should be a, yeah. that should be a punishment at some point. Somebody should have to sit and watch the entire MLB draft. Do you think we could talk uh, MLB GM? Like I don't know if we know any, but like if we 
if we actively started being like, all right, what front offices listen to part of my take? There are so many rounds. I think we could maybe get drafted. Just gas like they kind of throw away those last picks. Like they'll draft yeah. someone who's playing college football, being like, maybe, maybe if he says yes to us, right? Yeah, yeah. That would somebody be always, awesome. You're right. Somebody always takes a pick. They use it on like Russell Wilson. Yeah, quarterback. Who's let's, definitely going to? Let's the, get yeah. Max drafted because mm-hmm. he actually has. You could be like, well, he he. We I, have tape. I have a baseball reference. We have a baseball reference. So let's get Max drafted. I don't know who we can do. Like, someone, please, listening who works in some organization, please reach out. Just all we're asking for is 40th. You know what? We'll even – we'll pay you. We'll give you a signing Did bonus. Did have a rookie wage scale? <laughs> no, I mean – That he, could be an issue. Max, what if you got drafted and then you refused to sign? Well, Max just heard the word scale and shook his head. <laughs> That's some – all right, come on now. I'm getting too many straight. Come on, guys. Hank, Hank started it. I haven't taken one stray shot at you. And the top call wasn't yeah. even straight. That was just an option. About you being well, fat. I, yeah. Um, I mean, that was also. I mean, you were getting made fun of, so you were just like, "Oh yeah, let me deflect." But fact or fiction, yeah, 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 yeah. had one yeah. camera in yeah. one hand and seventeen pieces. Well, of I mean, it I was. Mean, you, you're acting like uh, you weren't even chewing. You started to lose, and you're just like, Max just won't stop yeah. eating. Yeah. You just turn the vacuum button on, and <laughs> <laughs> he's like Kirby. Yeah. <laughs> they cut the draft in half. There's only twenty rounds. Oh, oh. nineteen. There was forty. Rounds. There are forty rounds. Oh no, we might not so be able to get Max drafted. Six hundred and fourteen picks last year. Let's also, get Max drafted. Speaking of baseball, uh, Larry Lucchino and John Henry all time scumbags. What happened? I mean, Larry, John Henry. Well, didn't Larry Lucchino die? And Tom die? Werner. Yes, yes. All time hey, scumbags died, like, for not attending ago. Larry Lucchino's funeral. Oh. Okay. Which was two days after opening day, which they were at. That is crazy. All time scumbags. Mm-hmm. All time scumbags. All time scumbags. Probably sent some nice flowers. All time scumbags. Definitely don't pay their taxes. Lock them up. Yeah. <laughs> You would all time yeah, scumbags. Right, 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 right. We don't want to do the tax because then if they turn around, no, lock them up. Like, lock them up for you? what? For what reason? Not paying their taxes. Being all time scumbags. Okay, but not for the tax thing. Yeah, that should be part of it. But not. You can't judge a book by just someone that doesn't pay their taxes. <laughs> but I, I'm not one of those people. Um, Kate, the, don't stop. Stop <laughs> spreading this for me. This is, not <laughs> this is a satire <laughs> podcast. <laughs> the WNBA uh, draft. The the all the rookie wages getting tweeted out and everyone's like what the fuck it's like well this is what caitlin clark might be able to fix she might be able to improve things a little bit like if people uh, watch and then this starts making more money then they get to pay more but it was funny for people to be like oh that you can't even live in new york city on that well her number yeah. one she was number one like they got excited because her iowa teammate got drafted later on to the same team what is she making yeah probably yeah, like know. 50 I don't yeah. know. unrelated I, I'm a big Indiana Fever fan. Always have been. Yeah, well, unrelated, uh, we should probably get the boys some Chicago Sky season tickets because we're bringing back Bully Ball. What do they play? Uh, Wind Trust. Okay. Angel Reese is, she's really fucking good. Angel Reese and Cardoza. Uh, my friend Ricky O'Donnell uh, threw out a tweet because he, he covers all Chicago basketball. I think he said that in the last year, the two of them have shot five total three-pointers. Yeah. Bully ball. Just rebound. We're going just bully ball. Everyone's shooting the three. We're just going to fucking pack the paint and just have some beasts down there. Rebounds all day. Do you think I could get a rebound over Cardoso? Nope. Yeah, she would dominate me in the paint. Hopefully, I would love to have both of them come in, and we'll have uh, we'll have them on the show. Yeah. We'd love it. Uh, but, yeah, the, 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 the contracts getting tweeted out were tough to look at, but it will get changed. Also, hopefully. endorsements. I mean, Caitlin Clark, that's the thing Ravel keeps talking about how She's she's taking a pay cut from Iowa, but now she get a shoe deal. I would imagine her shoe deal is going to be huge, ten million, fifteen million dollars. It's going to be massive. She's going to get a ton of endorsements, and she couldn't do a shoe deal at Iowa because they're a Nike school. Yeah, she'll make a ton of money. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Hot seat. Cool throne. Hank. Nothing to do with taxes. Nothing. Okay. I don't know why I keep bringing it up, but other than a tax I just passed. Uh, my my hot seat is Hank because he didn't do his taxes. Shut up. <laughs> Well, I didn't say yet, it was you. Yet. I didn't say it was you, Hank. It yes. was any Hank. Yet. P- Let P- me finish. Yet. Uh, my hot seat is Trump, who's on trial I've always in New done York my taxes, for a tax issue. Except for that one year, when, but I would have got money back. But yeah. uh, No, my hot seat is Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay, because his restaurant got taken over. He had a pub in central London, and it's up for sale for 13 million quid, which I think is their way of saying dollars. Okay. Uh, and then six people, squatters, have taken over the building. And they're occupying it and saying, we own this place now. Oh, no. And so now he can't sell it because he's got squatters just living in there. Who? I mean, not to get political, but the squatting thing is... It blows my mind. Who set it up? How is that political? Why can't they just arrest him? 
So squatters. Someone in politics. It's someone in politics' fault. Which which is crazy. So this is in London. So I don't know what their law is over there. True. But um, remember back in like 2008, 2009 when the housing market crashed, there were a ton of people that were just moving into foreclosed homes and putting up these like legal notices. They're they're like the same people that would go to court and then complain to the judge about it not being the proper type of court because the tassels on the flag weren't right. Yeah. Like those, they, they know like the letter of the law. And nowadays there's a bunch of people that are doing it that are taking advantage of like renters rights in yeah. New York that are doing it. But this just squatting has gone back. I think back since like the 1800s, you can't like kick someone out. It's crazy. The thing is it, whenever I see these videos of like a guy who's like, I just started living in this house and nothing anyone can do. And nothing happened. How? Cause I'm like, wait, how I don't how? do like, what would you do? You just go home and you fucking lose my mind. Yeah. If somebody was in my house when I went home, I would be like, dude, you probably don't pay taxes. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely don't. Yeah. I would just be a bad, bad group to be in. Yeah. Be like, cool. (laughs) I guess you're paying rent. I would just charge them rent. Probably file a mean extension. (laughs) Yeah. Mean extension. (laughs) I'm dealing with some issues. What's a mean? What's the difference between an extension and a mean extension? It's just a really good one. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe after the date. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, my cool throne is the American judicial system. So I, I alluded to it a second ago, but the Trump trial is starting in Manhattan right now, and they're doing jury selection for it. And in the jury selection, one of the questions they're asking the prospective jurors is, do you listen to podcasts? Uh-oh. And then they're asking them, what podcasts do you listen to? So juror number B354 from Nomad was in seat number 10, and the podcast question, do you listen to podcasts? He says, yeah, if I get bored every once in a while, I'll listen to Barstool Sports. Yes. Might be in the Trump jury pool. Later on, there was an Upper East Side resident, a native New Yorker and investment banker at KPMG, lives with his fiance, works at a nonprofit. Uh, he's another sports podcast guy. He listens to Pardon My Take. Yes. Which got a nice from a reporter that was sitting in the courtroom. Holy shit. We might we might get some some fellas installed on the Trump jury right now. That rocks. Yeah. They just basically were asking this question for anyone who answers the daily. Yeah, the daily. They're you're, like, you're, you're out of here. Yeah, you're gone. See ya. You're gone. See ya. That's awesome. Yeah, so shout we out might that guy. So shout out those guys that are in the pool. I hope you guys get selected. Really scary thing to think of anyone who's listening to this right now deciding anyone's fate in a jury yeah will will the former president go to jail (laughs) well his fate is in the hands of a guy that listens to us pretend to know what we're talking about and just bought a turtle to gamble on sports a guy who basically was like clear my schedule mr pear's about to be unveiled yeah i can't i can't make jury this morning i gotta see who he's got in the in the play-in game oh i love it yeah so we might we might have some friends in very high places right now yes like it all right my hot seat is the chicago white Sox. so we have a strategy of betting against the a's it's been mixed reviews they did lose by two runs the other night um, uh, monday night i am a fucking idiot because this weekend i tried to bet on the bet against the athletics i put the bet in for the next day's game for uh, the following day's game which was also listed on the odds that i could put down on they ended up losing that game by a lot. That would have been a rare win for us in the past week. Ugh. I missed out on that money. And then yesterday, I don't want to blame Stephen Che. Yes, we can. I don't want to blame Stephen He's che. in charge of telling But us. it's Stephen Che's fault. Yes. And he didn't tell us to bet against the Athletics. And I didn't get the bet in. And the Athletics ended up losing by two runs. Yes. That's another, I guess that's a total of... Mm, Units that you need back. Yeah, units that that's, I need that's back. That's the exact way to it's, it. It's multiple units that I need back. And so I'm 0 for 2 on the last games that we should have won yeah. under the system. So the the thing is with the uh, betting against the A's, it was because of that fuck face, John Fisher. Fuck him. Uh, and also we thought they'd be really bad. We should have picked the White Sox. Cause the White Sox are so, so bad. And Jerry Reinsdorf, also a fuck face, yep. who's going to be – uh, if if the Bulls win on Wednesday night, going to be like, look, see, we got to the second level of the playing game another year in a row. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the White Sox, I have some stats from you. This is from uh, Jay Kuda, who's a great Twitter follower. Uh, he also is a White Sox fan. Number of times the Braves have been shut out in the last 430 days, two. Number of times the White Sox have been shut out in the last 430 hours, six. <laughs> 
In baseball history, two teams have been shut out at least six times in their first 16 games. The 1907 Brooklyn Super Baz. Huh? They were the do- before the Dodgers. And the 2024 Chicago White Sox. Uh, we also have this stat that, um, hold on, uh, games won since opening day. UConn men's Huskies, four. Chicago White Sox, two. Uh, it's, it's just bad. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Uh, they are on pace for the, uh, 2003, uh, Tigers that ended up winning 43 games. And here's the last one. Uh, number of days, Pedro Griffal has been manager of the White Sox. If you remember, we talked about it last week that Jerry Reinsdorf didn't want to fire him yeah. because he wanted to let his contract run out a little more. So number of days he has been the manager of the White Sox, 531. Number of days he has had a winning record, one. Mm. Opening day last year. Yeah, it's bad. Things are bad on the south side. They don't know where they're going to play in the future, too, right? They're looking for a new stadium. Jerry Rice is doing the John Fisher thing. He's yeah. just being a fucking dickhead. Somehow, and this is shocking, the, the story of the lady that snuck a gun into the guaranteed rate field and accidentally shot herself in the stomach because she was too fat to be holding a gun in her belly. Yeah. That's not the saddest, weirdest story to happen with the White Sox in the last two years. Yeah, and listen, I, I'm, not, I'm not a White Sox fan, but I, I have a lot of friends, people in my life that root for the White Sox, and I feel bad for them. I'm going to do something for them uh, that will hurt me, but I'm going to do it. I always say, honestly, the Chicago White Sox and uh, where they play Guaranteed Rate Field has some of the best food in all of sports, Major League Baseball, everything. Food, beverage, everything. Beers, everything. S'mores milkshake. Way better than Wrigley. Like, world's better than Wrigley. So whenever I tell people, like, oh, go to White Sox, I'm like, dude, it is, they just do a top class job of it. I'm no longer going to say that. Because that's what Jerry Reinsworth wants you to say. That is a good because he's place like, it doesn't visit. matter yeah. what happens on the field. We got great food. We got great beer. It's a great atmosphere. I, I can no longer say that. I'm going to stand with White Sox fans. I will no longer plug the fact that going to a game there is actually fun and uh, a great experience. So no more. They get Dog no- shit food. They get nothing out of you. Nothing. Because I, I would. I would. People would ask. I'd be like, dude, I do want that does milkshake. not have even close to the same food as the White Sox. That milkshake, though. I would let that milkshake do unspeakable things to me. Yeah. It's so good looking. Yeah. So uh, White Sox are really down bad. Uh, And then my cool throne is golf because golf, they did have a bad Masters ratings, but it was fun to watch the Masters nonetheless. Uh, Golf uh, has Rory maybe going to the live. So way to go, golf. He denied it. Yeah, I know. It was was such a classic golf, like live being like, oh, the Masters just happened. This is cool. Everyone's talking about the Masters. Let's just float out that Rory's thinking about $850 million. Didn't we talk? Was it with Whitney or was it with uh, Riggs? I forget. One of those guys. We said, how much would it rock if, if Rory just decided to go to the live after, yeah. after like talking all that shit? But it's just impossible. He was Mr. PGA Tour for it seemed like forever. He was the spokesperson. But this is all Li- Liv's entire strategy is this now where it's like, Oh, some big PGA event happens. Let's just say, oh, Tiger Woods is thinking about taking one point five billion dollars. Also, did you read the story about Greg Norman at the Masters? Yeah, his Weird hand, dude, his hand is sore. Yeah, because he shook too many hands during the Masters. So he got denied credentials. Which there's every time this happens, people are like, we don't even know if he actually tried to get credentials. He bought a ticket from, uh, he just bought a ticket online, showed up. Uh, said that there were so many people that came up to him and said, thank you so much for what you're doing for golf. And then he also, he like tried to stare down Rory for a couple holes, like mm-hmm. basically tried to get in his eyesight and Rory just never acknowledged him. But weird, weird dude. I did hear some people saying like you could, the microphones picked up that said, thank you for everything you do online. Thanks for all the content. Content, Greg. yeah. Now we do stand with Brooks and his live team. Smash. Mm-hmm. Smash. We can separate the art from the artist. Uh, also, golf's back because Scotty Scheffler went to a hole in the wall dive bar when he landed in Dallas. That was cool. That is cool. Yeah, just like us. And people are like, "Whoa, he wanted to be with his wife. His wife's probably sleeping." Yeah. Also, I oh, they they also they clown Tony O'Brown him. The PGA Tour did they like he had he woke up in the morning because obviously his wife's pregnant. She's sleeping in, and he made himself his own breakfast. And the Instagram caption was Chef Scheffler. Ooh. Big time clown Tony O'Brown. Nice. It's, nice. It's literally in his last name. He was wearing the same uh, outfit that he won the Masters in at this bar, which was very cool. 
I also was looking back, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna retract something with Scotty. Uh, I was like, I need this baby to come soon so that he doesn't get all this credit for being, you know, this awesome dude that I'm gonna leave. I think that he was forced into saying that he was gonna leave. He just said his wife was pregnant, and then media members asked if he would leave if she went into labor. He never was like, she's imminent for labor. He didn't have that plan? Right. He wasn't like, oh, she could have a baby at any time. Yeah. The reporters kept on saying, if hypothetically she had a baby. So, Scotty's off the hook. Okay. Great dude. All right, good. Yeah. I we, stand with Scotty. We like Scotty. Like, he, you know how that can happen where he gets duped where people are like, well, like, his wife could be three months pregnant and reporters would say that. Like, what if she has a baby? Mm-hmm. And he's got to answer it one way. That was he, he didn't have that discussion with his wife before talking about it. Right. He was boxed into a corner where it's like, She's probably not going to have the baby. Why are you bringing this up? Okay, if you ask me this question directly, I guess I have to say I'd leave. Yeah, w- by the way, I did just look it up. Charlotte the Pregnant Stingray. Yeah. By the way, pregnant, air quotes, in North Carolina. Still has not given birth. Now they're doing a bait and switch news story. Ooh. Now the story is she's regrowing her drop tail barb that she lost. Isn't oh. she crazy? So now it's just, oh, we're, we're supposed to forget about the, the pregnancy because she's apparently re-sprouting limbs. This this stinks to high heaven. I don't think I don't think this bitch is pregnant. Okay, and and guy who's listening who's about to walk back into the Trump trial, you can now go now that you have this Charlotte update. Yeah, the Charlotte, that, that bitch ain't <laughs> pregnant. I just love the idea of that guy just, yeah. <laughs> just sitting there, oh, this high stakes moment, <laughs> and we're just updating on Charlotte. And Scotty Scheffler to die. Scotty Scheffler drank beers. Drank beers. News. News story. That looked actually like a lot of fun. Like, imagine being at that dive bar and just sitting there on a Sunday night and the Masters champ walks in. Yeah. I, I mean, if I was Scotty, I would I would just live in dive bars for the rest of my life. So awesome. So I would awesome. just wear the green jacket everywhere. Yeah. I but you'd probably get a phone call from Augusta if you're wearing it in, like, an establishment they don't approve of. Yeah. We only get to keep it for a year. Yeah, you only get to keep it for a year. And then they keep it at Augusta? Yeah. Sergio or John Rahm talked about that, how he had it in his closet and he was saying he kind of wishes he wore it more because he has to give it back. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Scotty off the hook. Hopefully we get Scotty on sometime. We stand with Scotty. That was uh, he was duped by the media. Mm -hmm. My apologies for falling for their tricks. No, my apologies as a member of the media. Yeah. The media will do there, all. The, the media makes us look bad as yeah. members of the media. Like the media right now has been saying that Hank didn't do his taxes. Bullshit. Which is fake. Bullshit. 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 They're saying Max stuffed his face with food. Mm-hmm. Bullshit. That did happen. Did Tom Fernelli do his taxes? <sighs> Hank? Probably. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Okay. Jury rest. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jake. My hot seat is international basketball teams. Mm. We talked about it with Blake Griffin coming up, but the USA announced its Olympic roster for 2024 in Paris, mm-hmm. and it is stacked yeah they're looking to win every game by 50 i am uh predicting that the united states will win a gold medal in basketball this year steph i ran LeBron, all KD, the analytics tatum mb booker halliburton edwards holiday Adebayo, ad and one open spot mm. there's just one ball maybe for a guy blake griffin who's coming up yeah i we have squashed the beef with uh zach Eady because he didn't make any nil money and uh he was an all-time college basketball player I really want to play Canada and just fucking yam Just on dunk him. on him? Just yam on him. Canada's got a good team. Is Zach Eady, is he on Canada? Yeah. Okay, good. It's like Shea, Shea Gilgis, uh, Andrew Wiggins, uh, R.J. Barrett. Lou Dort, maybe? What are you going to say, Max? We we were Eady. No, I we're just Edie felt bad. positive, but Embiid, Wait. him trying to guard Embiid is going to when be, you say oh, yeah, yeah. be tough. When yeah. you say like we're Ed positive, it, it sounds like we've got it. We can't get it up. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're a speak positive, for yourself. We're, I guess saying positive ED doesn't really help. We have ED. <laughs> we have ED. Yeah, that's what I would we say if I was Canadian. Yes, Canadians yes. have ED. Yes, correct. Wait, is uh, where is, is Embiid playing in the Olympics? Yeah, he's on the list for the U.S., which is weird, but really, yes. Mm-hmm. Ring chaser. That was, yeah, he because he, he knows he's never going to win one medals in the team. NBA. Uh, yeah, here we go. It's actually a pretty good team. Uh, SGA, Jamal Murray, RJ Barrett, Dylan Brooks, Lou Dort, Kelly Olynyk, uh, Zach Eady. Decent team. Yeah, and then a guy named Thomas uh, Thomas Scrub. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's awful. <laughs> that sucks to be the last <laughs> listed. That's brutal, dude. Old Tom Scrub. Old Tom Scrub. <laughs> 
We got to throw them yeah, on Yeah, so they've kind of put themselves in a position where if they don't blow every team out. So why do we have an open spot? Uh, I don't know. Oh, man, who could it be? Yeah, who are they Who are they saving it for? So the potential list I'm looking at from Riggs' blog is Jared Allen, Paolo, Desmond Bain, Scotty Barnes, Bridges, Jalen Brown, Brunson, Jimmy Butler, Alex Caruso. Ah, Caruso. It's got to be Caruso. <laughs> got to be Caruso. Darren Fox, Paul George. Needs to be Caruso. Caruso for sure. We got to get Caruso on this team. Brunson snubbed. Oh, Brunson snubbed. You can't oh, yeah, you can't not, be so doing pro Brunson stuff until we find out who you're playing in the first I round. Know, Max. It sucks. <laughs> Max having All right, to Bridge is snubbed. Ma- Max having to go against the the New York Wildcats. Nova Knicks. Yeah. yeah. Nova Knicks. I hate that they all play for the Knicks. If they were any other team, they'd be my second favorite team in the NBA. But it's just brutal. Uh, Jake, your cool throne. Two cool thrones. One of them quickly. Plug God. First responders. We have a huge event yes. this weekend on Long Island. FDNY, NYPD, 50th annual hockey game on Barstool.tv Saturday. Uh, I believe our coverage starts at 4 p.m. Eastern. Can't wait for that. Plus rough and rowdy Friday night. So Who, Who's going to be on the call with you? So, unfortunately, Biz isn't able to make it because we have a NHL playoff conflict. So it'll be me and Colby Armstrong, who does great things on Spit and Chicklets. He calls games for the Penguins, so he's great. Uh, Wit will be in between the benches, I believe. And then Jeff, I think Dave will be there, uh, part of the pregame and intermission. Big how you did that last year. It was, it's an awesome, awesome event. Yeah. Always fights in that game, too, yeah. which is great. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to call him. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Any rumors to the truth that, that Biz was afraid because he, he can't spell NYPD? I believe that's false. Okay. All right. I read that online, but that's the, that's the media. Any truth to the rumor that Biz is missing because uh, Will Compton scheduled this for him? <laughs> I don't think that's true either. Okay. No, Biz has okay. the, the hockey playoffs are starting. Yeah. So it's understandable. Yeah, TNT. Yes. yes. Uh, so that is a cool throne with Rough and Rowdy. Big Cat will be there. And then my other cool throne is John Sterling. Yeah, retired. He retired out what? of the blue. That's a weird time to retire, right? I, I think yeah. he just like was like, all right, I got it one more time. And then two weeks in, he's like, I guess not. He said, I, re- I read an um, interview he did with Jimmy Tran of where he was basically like, I really wanted to retire to start the season. I kind of convinced myself I could keep doing it, and I can't. Um, goes out on top? Yeah. No, Jake. On his own terms. No, Jake. He, I mean, he did this for sixty-four I, years. I, I, legend, but legend. It might. I mean, the Stantonian. The he Stantonian had a great career. Did he say like that's way out of here? Yeah, and that yeah. is gone. The Stanton. And then he just said, "What? What <laughs> happened? What did I do wrong?" <laughs> yeah. He is a legend, though. I He's mean, a legend. Radio, base, baseball, and radio is just the best. So whenever you lose a, a baseball uh, announcer for radio, it, it does hurt. Yeah, those voices yeah. become part of your childhood growing yeah, up. Yeah, and, and it's the summer. The, the boys is summer. Yeah. Right. You, I've seen a lot of guys say it, and, and girls, the, a big reason why you get into the business is because you like what you see from the guys and girls you listen to. Mm-hmm. So what is he doing one last game? No, that's it. He pulled the plug. They're honoring him Saturday. Oh, wow. His last home run was a Stantonian Grand Slam. Oh, wow. It's fitting. At the stadium. Yeah. Susan Waldman staying? She's around, yeah. Okay. Oh, good, good. That's baseball. Of all the dramatic things, <laughs> George's box. Roger Clemens is she's, in George's box. box. Have you ever seen anything in all my years? All my years. Oh my god. Jake, what voice really spoke to you? What voice was like? I need to. I need to have that voice. I mean, in terms of like people or their actual. Voice? No, just a voice. Huh. Hmm. Kevin Harlan's got a great voice, Kevin but he's, got, he's got like an all-time. You can't try to fake a Kevin Harlan voice. It would sound very. Fake. Yeah. yeah. Just got to be yourself. Uh, what were you going to say, Hank? Do you have something to say? You had something to say? You want to say something? I, I want to say something. Yeah. <laughs> Hank to do sexes. Hank, were you falling asleep during Hot Seat Cool Throne? No. Did it a couple times? No. To see not off? Do you have a sleep problem? You did to sleep? I think you've been working out too well. I've been getting up early. Yeah. You got, you got sleep addiction? I was trying to get I was trying to get Max's attention to put the camera on you during Hot Seat Cool Throne. Did he? he? No, he didn't see me. Yeah, I wasn't asleep. Are these things recording even when it's not on them? Do you know getting up? They are, so we can yeah. review the tape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll review. The, yes. Yeah. Please make a, a a brief clip of Hank falling asleep during Hot Seat Cool Throne. Why are you guys coming at me so hard? I just had a question. What is it? If you fell asleep. Sleeping. <laughs> 
No, I, I heard the whole thing. Hank has been coming in early since the time he was up till 11.30. <laughs> That's a fact. I've seen you here very early. He's training to dunk. Yeah, sleep bro. You dick to sleep? <laughs> no, I haven't been getting any sleep. Yeah, because you've been thinking about dunking. And getting up early. Hank did put a camera in my face about five seconds ago, and he was like, do you think I'll be able to dunk by yeah, the end of the year? Yeah, for the documentary. Coming out soon. <laughs> oh, fuck yes. That, I mean, you have to watch a documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's get to, speaking of documentaries, let's get to Blake Griffin. He retired from the NBA today. He's been a big part of our show, and we have an awesome interview. Very, very Blake Griffin interview Stay till the end when we go on a side tangent. That It's more of a side quest. It's a side quest, but it was also perfectly Blake. If you've listened to the show for a very long time, you know it was just perfectly Blake Griffin on this show. Uh, and Blake is brought to you by our friends at Peloton. Let's talk about Peloton wherever you're beginning and wherever you want to be. Peloton encourages you to just start. Peloton helps you start no matter what level you're at, whether uh, you're starting. There's thousands of classes to get you moving. I have the bike and the treadmill. Whether that's beginner or advanced rides, feel good live DJ rides, or even artist theme rides, they've got you covered with Peloton. Get started with Peloton Bike or Bike Plus Rental at www.onepeloton.com slash bike slash rental. Uh, terms apply. That's www1 spelled out peloton.com slash bike slash rentals. Uh, Peloton is the best Get working out You don't have to go to the gym You can do it in your own home And they have people that will get you Kick you into high gear Get you working out So go right now Onepeloton.com Slash bike slash rentals And get into a Peloton today Okay here he is Blake Griffin Okay we now welcome on A very 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 special guest one of our oldest, dearest friends on Pardon My Take. He is a six-time All-Star, Rookie of the Year, but bigger than all of that, he's a two-time Blake of the Year. Three-time, right? Three-time Blake of the Year. Whew. It is Blake Griffin who has announced his retirement from the game of basketball. Uh, let's start there. You retired. Did you want to throw in a mention to us in the retirement uh, note? I did. I actually, you know, in like a week, I'm going to start putting out my previous drafts that didn't make the cut. <laughs> um, so just be on the lookout for those. they will be probably in the form of a video or something. So were we, we ever like, were you ever like, oh, let me sneak in right, right after my parents and brother. Like, hey, if we're talking about people that mean the most to me in my career. Yeah, and what made it me was great? like, it was like, you guys are my agent and I've had the same agent the whole time. And then he like, he, he was in a, he was in a mess about it. So I was like, you know what? The guys will understand. Yeah. 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 I, we don't. Yeah. We no, don't. definitely don't. Like we're, yeah, we're I mean, holding listen, this I, again. I don't know you guys, I guess, apparently. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It Next time I retire from something, you're in there. Okay. You know I'd All like right. to, I'd like to retire from uh, my career, potentially being in the NBA right now. I'd like to thank Blake Griffin for showing me that I could play in the NBA, even though I can't dunk. I too would like, I would also actually like to announce that I'm retiring from not dunking. I will be dunking men's leagues, um, smaller hoops um, <laughs> on my, you know, friends, whoever it is. So I'm unretiring. I'm, I'm retiring from not dunking. Okay, wait. And I would like to thank PFT and Big Cat. Yes. You're welcome. Okay, I like that. So wait, are you actually going to play men's league? Because that is... I, I all whenever I talk to someone who retires, it's like the coolest thing you could do is just show up to like pick up games or men's league games and just fucking dominate. I don't know. I mean, you never say never, you know, Justin Bieber. I I probably I, there's a chance I slip into a men's league game here or there. Yes. You know? Who knows? Yes. Who knows? All right. So maybe I come to the Chicago the the new the new dome and play a little. We play a little pickup basketball. It would yeah. be it'd be awesome to see you do one of those videos. I always love it when athletes pretend to go undercover for, you know, some sort of like marketing stunt. And they're like, Oh shit, that was Kyrie Irving. I had no idea. If you did it, you're like six ten going undercover. You could act like you were like an old man on crutches and then you just go out there and start yamming on people. That would rock. Yeah, it doesn't work as well when you're playing the sport that you are playing professionally yeah. undercover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know. But you had you had a great career, obviously, a lot of highs. Um 
you've done a lot of cool shit, a lot of cool shit. So congratulations. I think we truly mean that, that like, you know, this is a good moment for you. And I, yeah. I hope that a lot of people are telling you all the, you know, good memories they have and thanking you for whatever you've done for them. I want to know what your favorite part of your NBA career is. Cause I have one and I'm just curious if we had the same one. Mm. Um, I, I, I can almost guarantee you it's probably not going to be the same one. Uh, <laughs> Mine might be the same one. Mine yeah. might be the same um, one as yours. Man, favorite favorite part. Um, probably the probably the um, the the tunnel debacle. Oh, okay, know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the Rockets, you know, they they buried they they dug deep. They came, they popped up into our locker room <laughs> like the Looney. It was like a Looney Tunes uh, situation. Yeah, um, just popped up, and you know, we were there to we were there to meet him. We held our ground. Yeah, you know? I like that I appreciate. Yeah. It. What's your favorite? Because I have a favorite as well. Mine was going to be when you when you dumped that glass of water on the fan. When you were pretending <laughs> yeah. to like say, "Oh, what's going on in the video board?" and you just doused him with water. That rocked. Pre- what do you mean pretending? You were pretending to be like, oh, what's going on? And then you threw the water on him. Yeah, that was unfortunate, man. Was, unfortunately, the fan, he he was happy to be a Warriors fan. Uh, <laughs> but I actually, I actually know him. He's a nice guy. And we've, uh, we've, we've reminisced about it. Yeah. My favorite uh, moment from your NBA career is when you made $258 million. Oh, man. Was that it? <laughs> That's a pretty cool <laughs> moment, right? Uh yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess. You know, <laughs> growing up, I didn't never imagine that was that would be a possibility. So that was that was pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. So all right. So what's today like though? Because it is. I we were talking before. I mean, I'm sure you're just getting texts from everyone, and it probably was like, oh, uh, I didn't want to get this many text messages today. But is it, <laughs> it like, have you had a moment to be like, this is pretty cool that this many people are reaching out and like uh, care about me and and appreciate my career? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely. I, you know, it's, it's been three hours. I kind of just like, I've responded to some, you know, people that I know, but, um, it's been pretty cool, man. It's cool to see teammates, older, old teammates, guys that are still playing, uh, all my friends and family. I mean, you know, when you, when you play this long and like, it's been a, been a career, like a lot of people are affected by that. You know, your friends, your family, you can't go to stuff. I've missed weddings. I've missed, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So, um it's cool to like sort of put that put that in the past you know actually you know i didn't know how it was gonna feel but it is nice man it's um i was i was ready to be done yeah so wait so there was there any because when we had peyton pritchard and Derek white in here they said they begged you to come back was there any part of you this year where you were like maybe i can just get on a team for the playoffs be you know give some give a couple minutes here like or were you just i'm done uh, I, I kind of left it open uh, for a while. I, I, I did did have sort of a, I guess, a standing offer to go back to Boston. And I, I remember like December, like into December hit and I called uh, Brad Stevens and I was like, man, I, I really appreciate it. I had communication with him the whole time and I just, I, I wasn't, I wasn't there, man. Like, I just, I don't know, something changed. And I knew like when something changed like that, like it was time to be done. And I told him, you know, like, I think it was like into December. Um, and then I kind of like waited around. I honestly I just kind of was enjoying life a little bit and, and, uh, you know, finally decided to put it out there. But yeah, I mean, if I had got, if I, if I had gone anywhere, I would have gone back to Boston. I love those guys and I'm pulling for them and they got a great shot, but it was just time for me to be done. I, I don't think that I would have been like, I wouldn't have been able to give what I should give to a team you know, if my heart like truly wasn't in it, you know, that's gotta be awesome though, to know that you retired while someone was still wanting you to be on the team. Like that's a good way to go. Yeah. I was, I mean, yeah, it's nice to sort of retire someone on your own terms, you know, and, and, and not, uh, you know, I like be begging the whole season, but, um, super appreciative of Boston and those guys, Brad and, and all those guys, but it was time. Yeah. yeah. So what is actually next for you? Because you, we have, we have a feeling that you're coming after our job mm-hmm. in some shape or form. Well, you're coming after our job in podcasting. You're probably coming after Hank's job in golfing. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm pretty serious about my golf game. Uh, hopefully big strides this summer. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to play in that Tahoe tournament. So, you know, didn't get a championship in basketball, so hopefully I get a, <laughs> get a, get a meaningless championship at a celebrity golf tournament. That counts, um, yeah. Yeah, it does count. Um, I don't know, man. You know, podcasting, maybe only fans, maybe, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe start coaching a G league team, 
get into a fight, get fired, <laughs> try like to become that. a GM, get fired. I like know, that. Start, that sounds... start a podcast, get fired. Yeah. I don't know. That sounds like fun. Blake Griffin gets fired would be a great reality. Oh, too. see how many jobs you can get yeah. canned from. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I know. Blake what's, does wake up Mincy. Yeah, fired. fired. What's your uh, what's your what's your handicap right now? Uh, it's about ten something right now. Eleven, eleven one, I think right now. But you know, oh, we're, so you, we're working on it. You still suck. Yeah, yeah I'm not I'm not good at all. It's been like two, yeah, you know, almost three years now. And I, I was like, I think it was like fifteen, the beginning of last summer, and I've just been grinding. I I don't want to admit how how much I practice golf now. But um, I love it. It's like it's a it's a huge like stress reliever. Yeah, but that's actually good that you're a ten handicap because if you retired and you were a scratch, it's like what do you what do you have to do now? Yeah, I mean like what, like I, I feel like all the scratch golf most of the scratch golfers I know are miserable. Yeah, because they're just like unless you shoot under par, you're you're not you didn't do well. Yeah, yeah. I can go out there and I can shoot ninety five. Still had a great day. Yeah, yeah. If you see somebody yeah. that that tells you that they're scratch, and you're right, if they don't shoot par. Then you're like that guy's bullshitting me. He's not really yeah. scratched. They don't understand how exactly. like the the system works. Also, we've been. I think we said this to Brooks Kepka when he was on the show one time. I think we have more fun playing golf than Brooks Kepka or somebody at that level does, because when you hit a good shot out of nowhere, you're like, holy shit, golf is awesome. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. And for them, yeah. they hit one bad shot around and they're like, I fucking suck. So we're actually yeah. we're doing it the right way. I mean, you saw guys like come every every tournament. The guys are coming down the stretch, and they like put one in the water. Danny McCarthy the other day, or the two tournaments ago, had an unbelievable bag nine, record breaking bag nine. Sorry, don't mean to pile on here, but he and then puts one in the water, and everybody's like, "Oh, that sucks." I put one in the water. I'm like, I've "Got one in my pocket, actually." Yeah, yeah. Right here. you're like, yeah. "I didn't see that go in." Yeah, didn't that bounce out? For that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. O- Oberg when when Oberg was playing so well, and yeah, Scotty beats the shit out of him. And then he's like, damn it, I just lost the Masters potentially. It's like, dude, you played, you you hit like a hundred great shots this week, and that would be enough yeah. for my entire lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to hit a hundred good ones. Yeah. Have you played Augusta? No. Oh, you got to play it before be... Hank. It shouldn't be hard. All right, that's my new goal. Yeah, yeah. Do you have, a, do you have like a list of things you want to do? I feel like when everybody retires, they're like, okay, here's five goals that I have for myself. Yeah, it's mostly like travel stuff. Like, there's just like a lot, not a lot of places I've been able to go. You know, just because our off season was so short. I want to do do Australia, but in their summer, you know, okay. all the places that are summer during our winter, yeah, never got to go to. I checked the box off on skiing, skied the first time. That's um, that had to look weird. Yeah, I mean, also, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but my knee history hasn't been great, so that was a huge concern yeah. on the mountain. I was like, literally, I took a lesson, and I'm just, I get on the bunny slope, and there's legitimately like six five-year-olds getting lessons, and it's just me, just like, just going so much slower than them. So we got to hang out. We got to hang out. The tallest man on skis. What about uh, visiting beautiful Chicago and hanging out with us here? That's got to be on yeah. the list. Yeah, that's on the list as well. You yeah. know, it's, I hear it's beautiful this time time of year, or maybe in a month or two. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'll let you guys know when I pop by. It'll be fun. I want you to dunk on Max so bad. Yeah. Yeah, there's um, there's, uh, there's a few things I want to do. Uh, <laughs> that's that's one of them. That's close <laughs> to the top of the list. Sorry, Max. <laughs> no, you have to dunk on him. Yes. Yeah, like any, any, just any Philly fan. Yeah, you know, just, yeah. right. Uh, you, wanna... you might not be able to jump over a Kia anymore, but Max, how tall are you? F- six foot? Six foot. We'll say six one. Six flat. He's we'll six, say six, yeah. one. six feet yeah. tall. Could you jump over Max? Yeah, I think so. It's like a mid size op- uh, mid size sedan. Yeah. Like a... <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah, just come to Chicago, <laughs> teabag Max. Yeah, that'd be perfect. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> um, all right. I'm so y- your retirement uh, letter. Yeah. Well, no, not, it wasn't a letter. Well, it was kind of a letter. It was a non-letter. It was a non-letter letter. It was a non-letter letter. Wh- what part of it are you going to look back in like two days and be like, man, I wish I hadn't written that? Uh, I mean, hopefully none of it. I don't, I don't know. Was it bad? No, it was good, but you it felt like you didn't want to write it and you were forced to write it because it's like that's what guys got to do. They got to write it like you're you know, you you even said it in it. You're like I never envisioned myself as the guy who had to write one of these. 
Yeah. Well, I just, I just felt like I would do it a different way. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'll regret any part of it. I think I, I my message that I just wanted to get across was like, I, I am thankful even for like this shitty moment. That's like what makes the ups and downs of like the season, the ups and downs of a career, the ups and downs of life. That's like what makes it all worth it. You know what yeah. I mean? And I was trying, trying to be sincere um, with like a little bit of, a little bit of levity, but um, I don't know. I, I, I felt pretty good about it. Yeah. I, I honestly, I just wanted to just get it out there and be done with it. Yeah. You know? I mean, the correct answer was the part that you didn't mention us, but um, oh yeah, yeah, but I that's remember what I, was I said for. I was gonna, I was gonna. There's, there's like a part two to the retirement. That would have turned it into a letter. Being think, part, yeah, we being, in it. being yeah. part two of a letter is actually cooler than being part one of a letter. Yeah, yeah, because it's like the PS part is like the part that everybody remembers because it's just like the last thing they read. So True. Like, uh-huh. you know. True. I'll put, I'll, I'll put something together real nice for you guys. <laughs> have you, have you spent any time online today? looking what people uh, are saying about you no i have not you should do I that I, I i sincerely mean that yes. because like all the things that people are saying i, I search for blake griffin on twitter and i just oh get to watch highlight reels of your best dunks you should do that you should treat yourself and just be like yeah i was pretty fucking awesome at dunking the ball yeah yeah i mean yeah maybe i will it's fun to fun to relive it from a different perspective i guess who's who's who are you teabagging in this Knicks dunk? Oh man! Oh Timothy Mozgov! Oh man! Oh uh, yes, that was the bad. Brother. Yeah. Do you have Do you have a favorite dunk over the entire course of your career? Um, that was one of them. I remember like the Nick that Knicks game. I had like three dunks that I felt like were were like, I don't know. After that game, I've said this before, but like after that game, like I think I went home and I woke up the next morning, and I feel like my life like never changed after that game. So like it holds like a uh, like a special moment, you know, to me that that it was just like everything just kind of just like just took off. Yeah. yeah. Are you gonna Are you gonna be an actor? Because I feel like you would be an awesome actor. Um, I've got a couple things uh, lined up that I can't really talk about yet, Ooh. but um, not not like not as maybe maybe a little bit. Um, yeah. I got a couple things that I'm I'm pretty excited about. Um, kind of at the intersection of of sports and comedy i guess a little bit so well i mean like th- we we've known you for a long time i i think like there are athlete funny where a guy can like do a quote and it's like oh he's funny because we don't see an athlete do those quotes. you're legitimately funny and i would love oh, thanks, to see man. you i even saw you in that commercial you fucking crushed that commercial was it a super bowl commercial uh i don't know it's the ones where you were doing a bunch of stuff in the kitchen oh the uh, uh daily harvest one yeah I was oh, like, this yeah, is, thanks, man. this was great. Like, I want to watch more yeah. Blake. I only, like, when I started doing endorsement deals and, like, had to do commercials, I asked, like, early on, I was like, I only want to do something fun. I only want to do, like, a comedy commercial, you know, yeah. like, something that's funny. And then over the course of time, like, it just worked out because, you know, I think brands and people, like, enjoyed that a little bit more than, like, the typical, like, you know. Yeah. Every day I wake up and train. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, what I put into the game, I get out of the game. <laughs> and nothing wrong with those, but, like, I just, like, never wanted to do those. There's, it's so fun to, like, try to think of funny things and, and execute. So um, that's kind of what I'll be doing from Ooh, here on out. It would I rock like it. a teaser. It, it would also rock if you ended up like Shaq, where your face is on every product known to man. Mm. Like you're selling yeah. printers in Best Buy. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Like just, but just like everything Shaq does, but just like the competitor, like Ben yeah. Gay, yeah, uh, <laughs> whatever the competitor general insurance is, yeah, uh, Hewlett Packard printers, know. yeah, go one on one with Shaq, yeah. yeah. What, uh, well, who's your favorite teammate? That we wouldn't know either. You can maybe don't do like us, like a someone that's like a perennial all all star, someone famous, but like someone, some guy that's like. Give him his flowers. Like, yeah, no one knows this guy was the best. I love, like, I've said, I mean, I mean, Jamal Crawford's a name. Yep. Everybody knows that name, right? But he's um, the best, yeah. One of my young boys. I love Bruce Brown, man. Awesome dude. Yep. Um, love uh, Lamar Odom was awesome. Like, an awesome dude. Awesome teammate. Just, like, so caring. So kind. Yeah. Uh, I could I could name so many guys. I, I, I've had I've had some awesome teammates. I don't want to leave anybody off the list, but those guys are great. Yeah, and then what uh, are you gonna miss? Are you gonna miss the guys in the locker room? You got to say that. Yeah, you know what I think I'm gonna miss the most is 
those little times in the locker room, <laughs> the, the bus rides, the, the camaraderie. No, I really will. I mean, everybody, like every, t- every teammate, I remember like, you know, guys would retire and I talked to them and like, everybody mentions like, that's what they miss. I will miss like playing basketball a little bit. You know, sometimes I'll watch games and I'll be like, I oh, mean, it'd be fun to be out there, but also like, you know, into my career, I was, it's only out there half the time, <laughs> not that many minutes. So you know, it's it's it, when when like your favorite thing to do is play basketball, and like you, you're you're not doing that all the time. You're not doing it at a level you're used to. It's like uh, it's probably time. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But I will miss I will miss like those those conversations. Like the uh, I told some of the guys in Boston too. Like I, I'm not just going to sign before the playoffs because like part of like growing together as a team like through a season is like you go through all like training camp. You go through all that shit of like road trips that are miserable losing streaks like bad games whatever it is and like you sort of like grow together and you have that kindred spirits so like for me it was like i I don't want to just jump on a roster and like at the end of the season and try to win a championship like part of the joy is like being there from the beginning yeah Mm -hmm. that makes sense you could get that same kind of locker room environment uh if you were to do like the uh nba show on tnt Mm. Mm, have they yeah. talked to you about that? I feel like mm. you would you would be the one guy that I feel like would fit in with Shaq, Kenny, Charles, the whole crew. I don't know, man. I, I've I've had some conversations about doing some some uh, what's it studio stuff, some broadcasting stuff. It's just like I don't know. Talking basketball is fun and it's something I know, but like I don't know. I just kind of want to do something a little bit more broad than that. Mm-hmm. Um, so never say never again, but. You know those guys are great. I think they have a good formula, and I, I think I want to try to try to forge my own path a little bit. All right, yeah, I, I respect that. Um, I noticed. Actually, let me ask you to this way: um, Who is your favorite owner that you've played for who had to sell the team? Oh man, favorite owner that had to sell the team mm-hmm. gotta be D. Stir. I mean, yeah. <laughs> got a bad rap. <laughs> Not a really bad rap, but Jesus, was he a sweetheart, you know? Yeah. Once you got past the racism <laughs> and the <laughs> bigotry and, yeah. you know, dude, I mean, talk about misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed, well, I noticed he wasn't included in the thank yous. Yeah. In your retirement. Part, part three, part, baby. Part, part three. three. Part part three. Yeah, whatever you do, if you if you do a part two, we, we don't want to be on the same thank you as Donald Sterling. Yeah. Why not? Actually, you know, no, we can. You time. can throw us in. That's he, fine. He did have the best uh, testimony of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, yeah. yeah he's, sir, he's, sir, sir, I asked if that was your handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big <laughs> Magic Johnson. <laughs> oh, he ever did. man. Miss, miss, miss Deester, man. <laughs> miss Deester. <laughs> I'm going to get back to Blake in a second. Before we do, he's brought to you by Viator. Viator is a great, great service. Um, Hank and I used Viator last summer, booked a trip on a boat. Here in Chicago, Vitor is a solution to ensure that you plan the perfect trip and travel experience. Vitor is a tool that you can use to plan and book travel experiences around the world. The Vitor app and website make it easy to explore 300,000 plus travel experiences so you can discover what's out there no matter where you're traveling or what you're interested in. Vitor can help you plan a better travel experience. Again, they have over 300,000 travel experiences to choose from, so you can plan something that everyone that you're traveling with will enjoy. You can enjoy real traveler reviews to get inside information from people who have already been on the experiences that you're considering. They also have free cancellation, which helps you plan for the unexpected. Plus, Viator offers 24-7 customer service, so you know that you're going to get support at any hour if things aren't going as planned. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10, that's Viator10, for 10% off your first booking in the app, find the perfect travel experience for you. Do more with Viator. Blake Griffin is also brought to you by our great friends over at Manscaped. Yep, Manscaped. Every man knows how scary it can get when going for a close shave below the waist. That's why I trust Manscaped for all my sensitive areas. Introducing the Lawnmower family, including the Lawnmower 3.0 Plus, the 4.0, and the 5.0 Ultra. Yep, three ball trimmers. It's awesome. Each trimmer is equipped with skin-safe technology. It's got an LED spotlight and unique features for different grooming needs. These are waterproof, too. For the basic trim, go with the 3.0 and work your way up to the 4.0 and 5.0 for the ultimate grooming experience. And if you're taking it on the go, Manscaped has you covered. These trimmers come with a travel case and even a travel lock feature to avoid any accidental powering and or weird looks in the airport. 
This right here is on the cutting edge of cutting pubes. Upgrade your ball trimmer and your life will follow. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code PMT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus and free shipping with the code PMT at manscaped.com for the best your boys have ever looked. Trust Manscaped. And now here's more Blake Griffin. Uh, all right, so who's your favorite owner that uh, made all his money in a software company? Oh, man, I think, um, yeah, there was a minority owner for the um, Pistons who <laughs> had a tech startup. Love that. Um, yeah, he was great. I don't want to say his name, but he was great. That's huge. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I know who you're talking about. That guy rocks. Yeah. 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 That was a good yeah. answer. What was the... Uh, what was the best team you ever played on? Ooh. Oh man, dude. Boston last year, like we that's what's crazy about Boston this year. Is Boston's better this year than we were last year. Um I would I would have said Boston last year or obviously one of the Lob City teams. I mean, the our, our Nets team like we were super talented, but there was just like something missing. Obviously like, you know, we got I think if we had beat uh, Milwaukee game 7, like we had a great chance to win a championship but i don't know i mean I, I was super fortunate man some of those clipper teams man we had we won like 20 straight games one year and just felt like we were just like on a roll and then you know for mm -hmm. whatever reason we just always injuries or just just mental lapses yeah. um, that, that didn't get us there but i i yeah. was at that game the game seven against milwaukee the kd foot on the line you that series you were just fucking all over the place you were just like you were the energy, everything, just fucking guarding everyone. You know, sometimes the old dogs got to learn a few new tricks. Yeah, <laughs> I just remember because you guys had so many injuries, and it was just like Blake is just doing literally anything that's asked for him, and it's everything. Yeah, it was like Katie was just like scoring fifty, and then we were just trying to put, put like plug gaps of like <laughs> there's just like a new leak, and we're like, no, no, no go get that, go get that. <laughs> we just like plug that one. And, um, it was a fun series, and it sucks that we lost, but. It was a, it was, it was fun because like on every team of my career, I just, I sort of played like a very different role. Yeah. Um, which was kind of fun. It just kind of brings your career, kind of gives you that, that full, full spectrum. Yeah, and the Pistons have not been the same since you left. That's a fact. Uh, you know, they got some good young talent. Yeah, they got some good young talent. Getting a new president soon, and you know. Things are uh, things are looking up. I remember that that Pistons year where you took them to the playoffs and you had like before one of the games. I've never seen anyone have their knees wrapped more, and you just still yeah, went I had at the offensive yeah the <laughs> offensive lineman brace yeah and you know, like even before the game you had all the towels and everything and you just went out there and just gave everything and just was a warrior for them. Yeah, that was fun, and then um, you know I, I do I get I get some I get some 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 nice love from Pistons fans. I think maybe the majority probably hate me, but um, tell you what, I gave it a <laughs> quite literally almost tried to give it my all. Yeah. Well, Hank, Hank just stepped in here. Hank, do you have any Celtics questions? He said the one of the best teams he played on was last year's Celtics, and they're better this year. Not because Blake's not on it. Maybe no questions. No. That's, that's all I needed to hear. That's all you needed to hear. Hank's yeah, very I mean, nervous about this. I'm year. not nervous. I'm excited. He's I mean, dude, they're the they got to stay healthy, but like. I mean, Joe Joe Missoula is a year, like a year under. He's he's he he. I think he's like more comfortable now. JTJ. It just feels like they just have pieces that all work, and they're they're so good. They're so good. Yeah, Hank's nodding. He's poured his entire self worth into this into this Celtics postseason. Yeah, I mean, you know, sounds like just like a diehard sports fan. Yeah, diehard yeah. sports fan. Uh, uh, has anybody started the Blake Griffin for Hall of Fame conversation? Oh, can we be the first? I've we'll do it. it. Yeah, if you guys want to, um, I'm uh, sure. I think it's no brainer. I think it's first ballot. Ah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I don't know though. You never know. I uh, sometimes you 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 see guys like oh they got not like uh, who was it this year? Chauncey. I mean that's a Hall of Famer right there. Vince Carter, Hall of Famer. And then you look, you try to go look and see like what guys accomplished, what like awards. Obviously, winning a championship helps, but I don't know. I, I honestly, I'm not going to spend too much time thinking about it. I have one. Um, I have one question, Blake. Yeah. One one mulligan for your career. One shot. If you could have one single shot back and take it again, what would that shot be? 
uh, like a, like a actual shot. Yeah. Oh man. Um, there was like a moments like with the Clippers. I don't know. I mean, there was, there was, uh, there, there was. Uh, I don't know. That's a great question. Great question. Like there's probably uh, the series against uh, the series against. When we went went up three one on Houston. They came back and won. There was a point in game six at home uh, where we were up, and then you know they came back. There was like there was there was moments where I like you know had a had a missed shot that like you never know like with four minutes left a made shot could just completely deflate them. So it was probably in that series somewhere. I don't know exactly a shot, but. Not necessarily a game winner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, you retiring at this time can take your name officially off the list for the Olympic team for that open roster spot that they're keeping? I, uh, I mean, you know, I said I was retiring from the NBA, yeah. not the Olympics. Yeah. So, Skip Blake you know. a gold medal. Ooh. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, I, uh, I don't know. Never say never. Yeah. Kind of the theme for me today. Mm -hmm. uh, did David Duke re reach out to you today? Uh. Junior, the one that the the basketball player, the basketball player, yes, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. No, I was well, there I, another yeah. David Duke that reached out to you. Uh, I don't know. When I first met him, I walked up and I go, "Hey, man, big fan." <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he got it, but obviously, it's a, yeah, yeah, it was a joke. Yeah, it's very much uh, a joke. Just, <laughs> joke. Yeah, I think there's maybe a message message here from him somewhere. Yeah. Junior, David Junior. Junior. Yeah. David Junior. Yeah. The David financier. Junior. Yeah, the Jeff financier. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> what? Jeffrey? <laughs> uh, who's your favorite point guard you played with? Oh, man. Uh, Got to be CP. Yeah. Um, Got to be CP. Yeah. And yeah. He's like, you know, kind of, he, like, as a young player, came, he was there my second year, taught me, uh, he like taught me how to taught us as a team like how to how to like will a victory. Like yeah. that was his thing. Yeah. All right. Wait. I have I have another basketball question for you. Um, Kyrie Irving is beloved in the NBA by all the players. Is it just because mm -hmm. he's so goddamn good at basketball? Like, or when you when you play with him or practice with him, you are just like he does things that we all wish we could do. Yeah, I mean, like a perfect example is the left-handed running. Pushing floater that he hit over uh, uh, Jokic in yeah. the game. This, like, it's just like a shot where he he does that, and you're not like, oh, like lucky. It's just like he, he shoots it, and you just expect to go in. Also, like the way he like hangs it, like I, the things he can do are like I, I think he's the most talented basketball player in the NBA, maybe still. Yeah. It, it's a weird thing to say because, like, you, you know, there, there's so many talented guys, but the, the things he does at his, like, stature and, like, he's not, like, crazy athletic. He's athletic, but he's not crazy athletic. It, it's, like, it's pretty mind-blowing what he does. Yeah, because it's always so funny whenever he's in the news for whatever reason, but then all his teammates always have yeah. his back and you just – you realize, like, they probably just watch him and they're like, that guy can do all these things that help us win and are so incredible – that like no one else in the world could do that stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he he, he makes shots. Uh, I've seen him make even in practice. I've seen him make shots that you're just it just like leaves you just kind of like scratching your head. And then, like in an NBA practice, like you're playing five on five, like guys are hitting crazy shots. It's not quite the game like a game setting. So guys are trying stuff. Guys are doing stuff. So you see some crazy stuff, and he probably has like three of the top five things have craziest things I've seen in practice of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Just the, the way that he, uh, he puts the exact right amount of spin on the ball as he's coming down from the peak of his jump, like in the paint yeah. and getting a layup around somebody that's like seven feet tall. And he spins and also, the ball off the backboard and then, yeah. And also he's going the opposite way or like he's facing the opposite way and still spins and still like, does, it's like it's pretty nuts to be like that talented at, at, controlling a basketball yeah, yeah. one of the craziest like in-person uh basketball performance that i ever saw was remember we went to that game it was Cavs celtics in like what 2016 mm -hmm. and he scored like 18 straight and it was just like yeah. what like it just every type of shot and you're just like what is going on here like no one can even yeah. come close to touching him He's a great, he's a great player, and I think I do think he's he's misunderstood. He's definitely he's definitely misunderstood. Yeah. Um, but you know, what 
uh, not to it is your retirement, so not to make it about us. But uh, do you think we'll ever get Kevin Durant on this podcast? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude. perfect answer. I mean, <laughs> another guy who's misunderstood. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know how many podcasts he does. Does he do? Does he do a lot of podcasts? Um, I, I think he probably listens to a lot of podcasts. Yeah, he he leaves me on uh, scene on Instagram all the time. Always hurts yeah. my feelings. Yeah, I mean, listen. Never say never. Never say yeah. never. Yeah. Never say never. Yeah. Solid maybe. We never, th- you know, you yeah. never. There was probably a day when you were like, you know, growing up, you're like, will I ever make two hundred and fifty eight million dollars? Like, never say never. No, never say. Yeah, never. never say never. That's what I said as a kid. I said never say never. <laughs> to two hundred fifty eight exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird how that works. <laughs> I have it written kids down actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of kids say never. You'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So I want to talk real quick about Missoula because we're fascinated with him as a coach and especially his yeah. love of the movie The Town. Um, mm-hmm. You you know that he loves The Town, right? Like, would he always yeah, bring it up, like, constantly? No, that wasn't even really one. I, I think he did. He definitely did bring it up once. All the coaches last year had shirts that said, whose car are we going to take? Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, like, definitely, like, their 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 thing. I did know he loved The Town. I don't I don't remember him, like, mentioning it multiple times, like, maybe once. Um, but that's just who he is, man. He's like, he's like, will you see in like, uh, press conferences and like, you see him like try to block a guy's shot. Like that's how he thinks. Like, that's not like a, he's not putting on a, uh, like a character, Yeah, you know, he's not like playing that up. Like that's who he is. So like, and I think that's one of the most important things about head coaches is authenticity. Like guys can sniff through it immediately, you know, even if it's not your style, like guys can sniff through, you know, somebody who's in, uh, unauthentic, um, and that's just who he is. So I think that's why he's he's going to be a, a great coach for a long time. Did you know that he was getting choked out? That he he would have his uh, his jujitsu guy come over and just make him pass out for a little bit? I didn't. I we didn't we didn't touch on that. Uh, but I did. I have seen him. I have seen him in his. Uh, was it gi? No, not maybe gi. it might what be a gi. gi. Yeah, it might be gi. Um, I've seen him do that. And then he, him and like, him and like Grant, I think Grant Williams, him and like Grant would like, they would try to like play spar. And I mean, I got, there's no quitting that guy. Can you name all the Williams you played with? Oh boy. Robert Williams. Yes. Start there. Um, there's a guy named Jamal Williams who was on the Clippers that I played with. This is a tough uh, question. Uh, let me think. Williams. Uh, let's go to, Detroit. Uh, there, there was no Williams on Detroit. Nope. There was uh, – okay. Uh, this guy's – come on. What are we doing here? Robert, it's supposed to be about me. Robert, Mo, Lou, Grant, CJ. Mo. Oh, That's yeah, a lot Lou. of them. That's a lot of Williams. CJ Williams, yeah. yeah. CJ Williams. Played with a guy. lot of Williams. That's a ton of Williams. That's yeah. a lot of Williams that you played Yeah. With. I mean, listen, for, I was fortunate, you know, fortunate to have a lot of Williams as teammates. It's a great name. <laughs> Um, all right, I have one last question. It's a rowback question. com promo code TAKE, 20% off. Your first purchase, Q-Zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, rowback.com. It's actually not a question. I wanted to get a little sentimental for a second and say thank you to you, Blake. Um, you are a very important part of this podcast, and you can't tell the history of Pardon My Take without Blake Griffin. I, I really do sincerely mean it. Like you coming on, you know, whatever it was, six, seven years ago, having fun with us, knowing that we're idiots, like playing with the Blake of the year. Like that's what made it cool was that you were like, you took it seriously. And uh, I just want to thank you. Like you are, you, our success is uh, there's a, there's a piece of it is because of you. I, I greatly appreciate that. And uh, yeah, man, I, uh, I've always, I've always had fun. This is like the podcast that you look forward to doing um, because you never know what's going to happen. But (laughs) um it's uh it's awesome. I love you guys and uh yeah man. Yeah. When we retire, the, yeah, you will be in our retirement letter. With with Donald Sterling. Part one. Yeah. We'll thank part Donald Sterling. Part one. We're gonna thank Donald Sterling for giving us so much material. Yeah. And also Blake Griffin. Yeah, we'll put you right yeah. back to back. I appreciate that, man. Just good, like like the good old times, me and Donald Sterling. Yeah. Back to back. M- MVPs. I got to call him, man. I got to call him. Man. Yeah, you should. Just see what he's doing. Uh, oh, I, I, a little tip. If you do decide to get into the podcasting game, here's a great question you can ask your yeah. guests. So this will be my last question. 
Blake, if you were to interview yourself on the day that you retired, what question would you ask yourself? Good question. Thank you. Oh man, I get. I mean, I would have asked the Williams thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you talk about you talk about hard hitting questions. Yeah. <laughs> just leave people in a fucking just a just a pretzel. Uh, We're gonna have to ask every player that comes on the show. Yeah, well, how many Williams did yeah. you win? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, what would I? So, what would I ask myself? Yeah. On the day that I was retiring? yeah, so I'm basically getting you to do our interview with you for us. Um, I would ask. Uh, the Williams answer uh, was good. Yeah. No, I mean, I guess we could just leave it at we that. Can cut, we can cut it after yeah, that. Yeah, you actually yeah. – you, for, <laughs> you forgot Willie Green, Willie Warren. Well, no, no. Willie Reed. You guys said Williams. Was well, that but apostrophe that, S or just – No, just how S? many Williams? I think you said Williams's. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Williams's. So you forgot a bunch yeah, of man, Williams. I did, I, I did forget a bunch, man. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry to all the Willies and Williams. Well, <laughs> so if anyone asks you this, if you do another show, you just got to simply go, I think I'd ask myself, was it all worth it? And then I'd say yes. And then I'd say yes. And then you repeat it. And then I'd say <laughs> yeah, yes. And then I'd say yes. <laughs> was it all worth it? Sure when, I love when everyone, any professional athlete says that. Like, was it all worth it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. No. You, you got to play in a professional sports league. Would I, would I change anything if I had to do it all over again? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. I would answer that differently. I'd be like, I'd try to play with a few more Williams. Just to, yeah, would, yeah. Yeah, just to collect a few more Williams along the way. Yeah, I mean, I'm I could be up there all time. Oh, Williams. Uh, yeah, but you have to go up against guys like Robert Ory, guys that like bounced around. Yeah. Oh, let's few. look. You know what? Yeah. Let's look right now. Robert Ory's teammates. Yeah. Let's see. How this many is Williams. why. This is why okay. people tune into this podcast. Robert Ory. I'm gonna guess. <laughs> I'm gonna guess thirteen Williamses. Okay. So Blake. I mean, he may have rings. But... Do you, is there a website where you can just type yeah. in how many Williams? No, you could just. <laughs> <laughs> we should make it. Yeah. Uh, so Blake, actually, yeah, yeah. Blake had one, two, three, four, five Williams. If we're not counting Willies, but he had three Willies as well. Yeah, we're only talking Williams last name. Okay, so Robert Ori no had. Ooh, he had Hot Rod Williams, Eric Williams. That's two. Robert Ori only had three Williams. Holy shit! Good job, Blake. Who else could have a lot of Williams? We're 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 gonna trap you oh, into the basically the, the the lottery ball account. again the ping pong ball again. <laughs> uh, let's just see, uh, Kobe Bryant. No, nah, I think maybe we just end it there. No, 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 no. Lou Williams, Shimon Williams, Sean Williams, Kobe only three Williams. Not everybody can handle <laughs> being on teams with Williams. I, I just like I treated him like everybody else. You know what I mean? I Jay Crowder. I bet you Jay Crowder's. Uh, all right, all right. Let's Jay, see Crowder's Jay Crowder. Real oh, no, no, no. You know who? Ish, Ish, Ish Smith or Jeff Green? Okay. Been on oh, oh, Jeff Green. Green. Jeff Green's a good. Jeff Green. One. Yeah. All right, all right. He might be the all-time goat. Real quick. <laughs> shout out! Shout out to Ish and Jeff Green. <laughs> all right, this is big. All right, Jeff Green, Terrence Williams, Nate Williams. Only two Williams. Look up Jay Crowder. We gotta, Holy shit. We got to find somebody that can be. You played. might have the record for Williams. What about Lou Williams? Oh, you but think Lou, you, no. Williams attract Williams? No, I don't think so. He just played for so many teams. But Yeah, because how many times did you see L. Williams on the back of his jersey? Never. If there was another Williams, then he'd have to be L. Williams, and he was always just Williams on the back. Yeah. Jay Crowder. You ready for this? Uh-huh. Oh, God. Jay Crowder. And just let me have this on, on my day. On my day, has never played with the Williams. What? That's got to be the biggest statistic anomaly in the Holy history of sports. Holy shit! Uh, feels pretty good, boy. <laughs> Jay Crowder has never played with the Williams. How is that possible? Did you guys well, just have? Let's, uh, let's keep this in mind next time uh, yeah. we do Blake of the Year. You know, All add right. that to the old resume. Lou Williams only played with one Williams. No. Yeah. No, he played with two Williams, and himself. So himself, that's, he probably lot. played with himself Mar a lot. I mean, uh, what's his name? Marvin Williams in in Atlanta. This is a whole Williams. subset <laughs> of category which Williams has played with the most Williams. This is a perfect way to have your retirement uh, <laughs> PMT interview go, where we just. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's see. How long it's mostly can we... just you guys typing stuff in on your computer. Yeah. Well, you just sit there and your phone blows up with like a bunch. Well, yeah. actually, did any Williams text you? Uh, uh, does Instagram messaging count? Yeah. Then no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, I, I'd have to. I, I'd have to scroll back. You know, I'm getting so many messages, guys. It's just it's hard to keep mm-hmm. track right now. So yeah, let's just put <laughs> put me down for two Williams messages. Yeah, okay. I found I found one guy who has five as well, but I'm not gonna. Well, you know what I could say because he's one of your favorite teammates. Jamal Crawford also played with five Williams. Yeah. So that's that's cool. Yeah. You get to share it with Jamal. That's great. You know what? That's an honor. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Jamal, an we'll have Jamal on when he retires in what ten years from now. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> he's uh, I, I, didn't he officially? Re- I think he did. I think yeah. he officially. Yeah, retired. he did. He, yeah, no, of course he did. I remember. Yeah, I oh, remember. Also, um, credit to you for retiring when it wasn't like, oh, I thought he retired a while ago, because you know your namesake Blake Bortles did do that on this show where he just accidentally retired on this show. So you did a good job with that. Because you never want to be the guy who's, like, retiring and everyone's like, oh, shit, didn't he retire, like, 10 years ago? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You always leave people wanting more. Yeah. You, know? mm-hmm. yeah. you, you got to know gotta know when to exit. Although I'm sure people are like, D- didn't he retire 10 years ago? No. That, those people you know. are lazy. Yeah. That's a, that's a lazy comment. Lazy sports fans. Lazy, lazy sports, sports fans. fans. I like you said, yeah, got to know when to exit as we look for the 10th person who has the most Williams uh, as teammates. <laughs> yeah. All right, Blake. Got to know when to call. Blake. Yeah. You, you are the best, though. We can't thank you enough. Um, we do want you to come out to Chicago and dunk on Max. It would be awesome. One last dunk we could call it. Oh. One last dunk, yeah. Maybe maybe make a whole documentary about it. Oh, I oh love the it. last dunk, yeah, yeah. One last dunk. We could actually do like we could we could have it be like you start with you know we could have you dunk over our turtle, Mister Pear, and then like mm-hmm. go up from there. We'd have you dunk over a dog, mm-hmm. and then yeah. it's just and then it's Max is the one last yeah. dunk and just balls in his face. God, can you imagine if I like slipped and kicked the turtle or the dog? Oh, you can kick me. That's fine. Yeah, yeah you, you can kick Max. Max. You can kick uh, yeah, Max. Yeah, I mean, dude, <laughs> fine. You're, you're a tough guy, dude. You'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, all right, Blake. Thank you as always. Congratulations on an incredible career. We love you. You're always a part of this show, and uh, look forward to Blake of the Year coming up. Thanks, boys. I appreciate it as always. Thank you, Blake. And you're not retired from Blake of the Year. No, for no, the record. No. Okay. Still active. Still yes. active. Yes. Got still it. active. Blake was brought to you by our great friends over at Visible. Here's something you might not know about wireless. Sometimes when what you see is what you get. With Visible, what you see is always what you get. Switch to Visible, the wireless company that makes wireless visible. Get a one-line plan with unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon. Just 25 bucks a month, taxes and fees included. One-line wireless, just $25 a month, taxes and fees included. Visible is the wireless company that makes wireless visible. There's no hidden fees. No, really, there's no hidden fees. Unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon. Switch now at Visible.com. Save on wireless with unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon. In times of traffic, your data may be temporarily slower than other traffic. 5G access required a 5G-capable device in a 5G coverage area. Monthly rate on the Visible plan. Terms apply. See Visible.com. Switch now at Visible.com. Okay, it is time. We're going to do listener FAQs, but we also have... The newest member of Pardon My Take, ready to be unveiled. He's adorable. It's Mr. Pear. Mr. Pear. Oh, no, Mr. Pear. Who are we going to take, Mr. Pear? Now, for longtime listeners, you know that we had a gambling goldfish. We had a, a listener FAQ a few few weeks ago that sparked the idea in our head to get another goldfish. And we're like, you know what? We've done goldfish. They die really quickly, and everyone blames us. Let's get something that's going to live, outlive all of us, a turtle. Uh, also, shout out Marcus Paul, AWL, who found the tape of when we were actually getting Larry the second in 2017, we were talking about getting turtles. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's a chance that we might just want to get a turtle as well. Actually, I'm going to say this right now as an idea in my head. We're going to announce turtle racing. Uh, this winter, we're going to buy like six turtles and make a track. I'm going to race them every Friday. So for anyone who says that uh, we took an idea or Jack and I, we've had this idea for six years, seven years. Yeah, it's been seven a long time. Years. Long time in the making. Turtle racing. 
The first bet I ever won at Turtle Race in Key West, Florida, 100 bucks. So Turtles. Oh, here he comes. So it appears that this is a, a Russian tortoise. Uh-oh. Is what it is. Psyop. This Mr. Russian. Pear. So, Mr. Pear, you're adorable. Look how cute he is. Hank, get in. This was hey, your buddy. idea to name him Mr. Pear. Hey, hey, Mr. Pear. Hey, Mr. Pear. He's a good boy. Oh, he's Can so he cute. fall off this, Max? No, he's fine. He's got a shell. Yeah. Uh, but the cool thing is this is the, uh, the first... Type Max, of put it further on the table. Wait, wait a second, memes. Oh, me. By the way, memes. It is memes is turtle. Um, memes we're is all already. Papas, well, we're all papas, but memes is the number one papa. Memes is tasked with keeping Mister Pear alive. Memes is also hey, madly in love with Mister Pear after twenty four hours. He's very cute. He's territorial, Mister Pear. That's my boy. He likes that it when you scratch his shell a little nervous, bit. Can he bite? No, he doesn't no. bite. He's too sweet to bite. Max, Max, put it further on the table. Yeah, no, it's, it means it's I, got it. I got it. No, I, what I was going to say, this type of tortoise is actually the only type of tortoise to ever go to the moon. Oh. We're going to go to the moon. Mr. Pear, you're an astronaut. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, no, Mr. Pear, did you oh, forget to Mr. unlock the door in the Apollo mission, Mr. Mr. Pear? Mr. Pear. Mr. Pear already pooped on Max. Oh. He came and on Max. came on Max. He came on Max. Yeah. Mr. Pear, why'd you chew on the NOS? He's very cute, isn't he? He's so cute. He's adorable. All right, so Mr. Pear's going to pick the Sixers versus Heat playing game. This is his first pick. You know he's going to live to be like 40. Yeah, Memes was really nice to us when he came out, and he just goes, he's going to outlive all of us. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, he's going to live to 50. And so, I mean, I, for me and PFT, I understand, but Memes is putting a cap on your life, Hank, at 80. You, Max, at 77 or whatever you are. Um, Pug, I don't know how old you well, are. You have to Pug. factor in dog ears. Pug, whoa, whoa, pick him up, pick, pick him, up, him up, pick him up, pick him up. Point. Memes is very nervous. Put him down. He's yeah, fine. Put him down. Memes is That's totally safe. And you put the camera on. First pick. Put the camera on so we can see where he goes. Mr. Pear. And let's do some listener FAQs while Mr. Pear makes a pick. Oh, he's going. Oh, he's the, going. He's going to the oh. Sixers. He smells he the did pears. it so fast. Yeah, he did that with some. He's a Philly guy, Mr. Pear. You did it, Mr. Pear. So you picked a Sixers. Love Philadelphia, oh, Mr. Mr. Pear. Did you know that in Philadelphia, they, Max's dad will put you in a soup and eat you? Oh no, we can never bring him to Philadelphia. Yeah, no, Max's dad is not allowed anywhere near this turtle. All right, so I'm gonna put a responsibly large wa wager on the Sixers right now. Let's go. What are they? Oh, they're five and a half. That's fine. They got that. They're basically the best team in in the league right now. Mr. Pear, let's say five. Five is minus 115. We'll go five. Mr. Pear's pick is Sixers minus five. Responsibly large wager has been put on Mr. Pear's first ever pick. Let's go 76ers. Come on, Max. This is now big time pressure for you. Mr. Pear's first pick. Uh, first question, valid question. What steps will be taken to prevent Billy from fucking Mr. Pear? Oh wait, by the way, if you're everyone who's watching, watch the watch it. We obviously have uh, Mr. Pear out right now. You can see him. He's making All his picks clips. live on camera. He's ma he made his pick live on camera. So well, how Billy can't fuck Mr. Pear? I wouldn't put it past Billy to try, uh, but I think he's more of a frog guy. right? Yeah, he's not a frog. Mr. Pear's not a frog. He's very much turtle. We should get a frog though. Yeah. And dress it up all slutty just to taunt Billy. Yeah. Who is the most active in the PMT group chat? Who has the funniest messages? Mm. Mm, most active. Memes is surprisingly active for how much he talks. Yeah. I'd say the the text per word that memes actually says is a very high ratio. Can't you see depending on the how big the bubble is? Is that what that means? I think, I think that that's is. recent. Yeah, so what I'm looking at right now, it's Hank and Max. Or is that memes? Hank and Hank and Max and memes are, are most active. Um, Max has some good one-liners on there. Yeah, I usually am only, if I'm, if I'm popping in, it's usually just to stir the pot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shane is easily, Shane and Pug. They stay off. Yeah. They, they, they don't. 
They send the Dropbox. They don't even like a yeah. message. Yeah. Yeah. They Every don't. They won't I even like up. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say the person who likes messages the most is Jake. Oh, by far. Jake. Yeah. Jake will just hammer the like oh, the button Every, on everyone. And I Every, wish you guys luck when you're talking about bets. Yeah. yeah. You, actually, that's true. Anytime anything remotely good happens to us, Jake is in there with a congrats. Yeah. I hate congrats. sometimes we do yeah. the like someone congratulates and you have to. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. Hate like, it. Oh, congrats on your do. card. Yeah. I have to say congrats or else I'm gonna get shit for not saying congrats. But I actually don't feel correct. I agree with you. We got to just stop doing that. All right, I'll stop. I, no, no, you can keep doing it, Jake. But, Hank, you and I, like... We, yeah, I just don't want to come in and be like, well, yeah, everyone else said congrats. All right, so you and I will yeah. do a, a, an alliance, yes. no congrats. Yes. Unless it's a championship. I'll congrats on a championship, but, like, winning, like, a play-in game, no congrats. Jake, you should keep being you, because that's you. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that is you. How long would you have done the podcast at the start with no success before quitting? Oh, good question. Mm, yeah, I don't know. It was fun. Like, I think our goal from the start was always just to entertain ourselves. So it probably would have lasted for a little bit with no success. Yeah, we didn't really know the success. There was no, well, I guess, the ch charts. Yeah, and we also did have that when, we, when, when, when they couldn't really tell actual analytics. And I think it was the first Harbaugh interview. And they're like, 10 million people <laughs> listen. And we're like, that's not possible. Yeah. Uh, but I think I said this a, maybe a couple months ago when PFT and I were... We got to drive back from the Arizona Bowl together, and it was just two of us, and we had a moment where we were like, imagine if this didn't work out. Like, our lives are awesome because of this. Yeah. Like, it's directly, obviously, Barstool and everything before that and everything after that, but this has been the catalyst for everything else. Yeah, it is. It's it's real. We do remind ourselves of that from time to time, oh, too. I remind myself pretty much every day that uh, when whenever I get down, I'm like, but I get to do the best job ever. Yeah. When I use my sauna, I'm like, this is this is the sauna that Hot Takes built. Yeah, because there's days where I get that. down on myself. I'm like, but dude, you fucking have an awesome job. Actually, the, the real answer is probably if if we had gotten fired from ESPN and we didn't have a successful podcast, we probably wouldn't have gone back to our unsuccessful podcast after that. Yeah, although we wouldn't have gotten ESPN if the podcast wasn't successful. That's true, which would have been a great success. Yeah. I would say a year. It seems right if we had just been doing a year and like they're like, yeah, 10,000 people are listening. That probably would have been, okay, we got to do something different. I know you guys give each other a lot of shit. That's all in good fun. But has there ever been a legitimate beef between anyone involved with PMT? Legitimate beef. I don't, I don't think so. Nothing's come to mind. I, I'm trying to think if. Hank and I have ever had legitimate beef. I've never had legitimate beef with PFT. I've had no beef with anyone. Hank's just drama free. That's what we always say about him. No, there's tense moments, but they're never they never last. Yeah, we get in cat fights. But. Yeah, right. It, which is it, it would be crazy if we didn't. Yeah. That would be mm -hmm. fucking weird if we just never got into little like tiffs. Yeah. I the only time that it's not beef, but there are moments when we're on the road. And like breakfast, yeah, bre mm. breakfast. That that breakfast is a perfect like. If you call that, well, a yeah, fight, you didn't let me eat. If you call that a fight, then yeah, of course we fight. But that wasn't a real fight. Oh, the, not... dip spit, dip spit. Oh beef. yeah, because you, yeah. I, but that still, also wasn't. But we also really we also still don't know who's. <laughs> so we could was. never know who who had <laughs> the <laughs> dip spit next to your seat in the Mountain Dew container. Yeah, <laughs> you also did because we're all drinking Mountain Dew, so we don't know. Um, there'll be moments like when we're on the road where we just like sit silently together. In like an Uber, where it's just like we're just tired. That's usually the end of a trip. Yeah, but that's not that's not beef. Yeah, no, we've we've been lucky to never have like an actual. I was mad at Max for about for about a minute, actually mad, when he was watching the Phillies last year and he spat on me. Yeah. But that was an accident. He didn't mean to spit on me. He was just too yeah. excited. And then I was just, I you ever been in a situation where you're just mad at what happened, but you're not actually like you don't know what to do about it. Because you understand that Max is just going to yell and scream. And he's got very moist lips. Yeah. And so when sometimes it gets a little out of hand, you, you said the splash zone, you get gallagher in the front row. And then I just had to calm myself down and be like, he didn't mean to do it. Max would never intentionally spit on you. He's just a messy guy. Yeah, we've been very lucky because it is – there have been a lot of successful podcasts that have broken up. And we've never had – we've I don't think there's ever been something that's lasted like over a uh, – like couple of minutes like through a night yeah right never go to like, bed angry we've never gone to bed angry and also we got lucky because our beef guy isn't here anymore
Yeah, there is. There was a guy that <laughs> there was a guy who did beef. We all had legitimate beef with <laughs> yeah. him at some point. There was a guy who just he basically was cooking beef. Yeah, but not seasoning it. <laughs> <laughs> Last one, uh, Mr. Pears. Venture. Oh, dude, dude Mr. Pears on the move. Shell, yeah. Mr. That's what they're Pear. saying, all the kids. Don't let him go under the couch. Don't let him go under the couch. Oh, no, Mr. Mr. Pear, we're never going to find you. If you Me- memes, how nervous are you about Mr. Pear rolling around here? Uh, Not that nervous. It's very funny. Max just keeps putting him back in the middle. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? Um, Mr. Pear's technically moving faster than Max. <laughs> I'm not I love Mr. Pear. Mr. I love Pear's you, Mr. Pear. Best. I love you, Mr. Pear. Who's a very good boy. Is it? Can I boop him, Max? Can you bring Confirmed him boy? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a dude. Memes? Yep, confirmed. Can I boop? Can I boop? He, he goes in when you boop him. Boop. Oh, oh. Yeah, he goes in. It's so cute. You want to so boop him? Yeah, I want to boop him. He loves you. Mr. Bear. He loves you. Mr. Bear. Give him a kiss. He loves you. Mr. Bear's one of your papas. One of your papas, Mr. Bear. <laughs> I just kissed him on his little turtle head. <laughs> oh, let me give him a tummy <laughs> tax. Yeah. Tummy tags. Tummy tags. Tummy tags. Oh, tummy tags. Oh, yeah, Mr. he's so cute. We're going to get all kinds of weird shit from this pair. Yeah. I'm circling back to the fact that you said that you wanted to record an episode at an AWL's wedding in Thursday during uh, NFL offseason. NFL Week 6 recap. I'm having a wedding at the end of August on a Thursday, which Pugs invited to and hopefully comes, and it would be pretty chill if you guys came Wait, through. Wait, Pugs uh, actually knows the person? And recorded an episode at the wedding. I cleared it with the fiancé who believes Bruce Springsteen and Avril Lavigne will also be attending if invited. No shot that happens. So thought I would shoot my shot with the PMT boys. Love you guys. Is it a pug, flight? Pug, are you aware of this? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know who wrote this. Is oh, it a yeah. flight, Pug? Yeah, it's in it's in Jersey. Okay, no. Uh, I'm out. Yeah. It's at the end of August? Yeah. What yeah. day? Thursday. Uh, yeah, just a Thursday at the end of August. I'm going to say something that's going to make Hank even more mad. <laughs> I think the only way we can do this is we just have to host a wedding here. No, don't say <laughs> that. No, don't say that. Don't say that. I mean, the worst <laughs> idea that we've ever done. There's, you and know what? The entire yeah. history of this podcast was when we when married. Venue. We married. I don't even. We've, yeah. we've probably told the story. We said we wanted PFT wanted to marry someone, so we've no, not people. get married to someone. I was an ordained minister. Still am. You want? Yeah, you want to marry? Yeah, I'm ordained. That's that's the correct verbiage. But you could also. It also sound. I'm just clarifying. So we said marry someone. That's what you said. I want to marry someone. PFT really wanted to marry someone. That's not what I so said. So we found two people for PFT to marry. Got them in the back of a van in a in a parking lot in, in Ralph's. L.A. in Ralph's with like 150 people outside the van. Pft officiated the wedding. Most awkward thing of all time. I think I left the van in the middle of ever. It. I, like, I can't do ever. this. Like I, I'm I'm out. I want to crawl out of my skin. This is so awkward. Thinking they were actually getting married. Then it ended, and it was the kid's sister. He's yeah, like, yeah, that was actually my sister. I just really, like, you know, convinced her to do it because I thought it'd be cool. Thought Worst it'd be idea ever. Very bad. Idea. So also- yes, I would say that this. Is also a terrible idea. There was a Zoom one that we did for real over COVID. The right? Zoom one for real, yeah. That was two people just getting married. Yeah, married, yeah. married. Um, if, yeah, it's just a bad idea. It's just a bad idea to. There's there's a hundred fiancés listening to this right now that have already turned the podcast off because they don't want their fiance to have any ideas from this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no to this dream. Eventually, we will do it. No, no. I'm not giving no. up. I'm not giving up. Nope. We're not going to do it. I'm not giving up. I'm just eventually, every person that tweets at me, DMs me, I'm just at Barcel Bickhead. Listen, at Barcel Bickhead. eventually someone's going to invite us to a wedding that's like down the block on a Thursday, and we can just pop in, just record 10 minutes during the electric slide, and then be it. Nope. Nope. Okay. I'm, I'm, you know what? Big, I'm not giving up on the AWL. Big Cat really wants Remember, to go I'm to one, one of your weddings. You guys I'm, can do I'm it I'm just saying too, it would be a funny idea. Uh, pugs. What is, what's Mr. Pear doing? We could, we pugs could wedding next year. He said that we could do in a pugs wedding next year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that it, that works. Is it a flight? It's pug. Is it a flight? Yeah, it's also a flight. Is it, yeah. <laughs> oh. this is a flight. I'm out. It's also in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a really nice gift, pug. Look awesome, at pug. Look at Mr. Right. Pear's <laughs> numbers. Look at Mr. Pear's little tail. Forty. Forty. Eight. Eighteen. Someone should ninety nine. He's trying to escape because he's so happy. Um, I just did the dumbest Google ever. I'm gonna do seventy six for what, in honor of Pete uh, Pear's first first pick. What number is turtle? <laughs> what does it say? Sixty one twelve. I'll take sixty one. Okay, I'll do three. <laughs> Anyone want twelve? 
I'm sick with eight. Okay. What number is turtle? Wait, wait. You said twelve. Let me just. It says it, sixty-one. The four-digit number is, for turtle is sixty-one twelve. Is turtle is twelve turtle? No, sixty-one. I know, but I'm verifying if <laughs> if twelve is turtle. I'm not saying anything that twelve is turtle. I'm I'm sticking with eight. Okay. All right. Uh, everyone, say their numbers. Seventy-six. Three. Pair. Eighteen. If it's forty, I will maybe kill Mr. What? Just kidding. <laughs> Oh. Just kidding. Oh. 72. Mm. 72. Undefeated 61. Dolphins. Mr. Pear undefeated. Love you, Love you guys. Love you guys.